Welcome to ESPN's exclusive presentation of Ball Week. In last year's inaugural Humanitarian Bowl, Conference USA's Cincinnati Bearcats dominated Utah State of the Big West. This year, Conference USA is represented by Southern Miss. A decade ago, Brett Favre had the Golden Eagles soaring. This season, record-breaking quarterback Lee Roberts and all-conference wide receiver Sherrod Gideon have the Eagles flying high again. Today, they face a tough Idaho Vandal team that won what is known in these parts as the Super Bowl on the same field against Boise State to clinch the Big West title. And the Vandals are headed to the humanitarian Bowl. It's the Southern Mississippi Golden Eagles against the Idaho Vandals. Before a spectacular backdrop along the Boise foothills sits the blue turf of Bronco Stadium, home to the second annual Humanitarian Bowl. Southern Miss 7-4 overall, runner-up in Conference USA against the Idaho Vandals 8-3, champions of the Big West. Southern Miss All-America junior defensive end Adelius Thomas, he plays his game behind enemy lines. Hi, everybody. I'm Wayne Larravee, along with Randy Wright. We'll be hearing from Jim Barber a little bit later on. This should be an entertaining ball game here today. We've got two very good offenses in town. And Southern Miss, led by Lee Roberts, the guy who broke most of Brett Favre's passing records down in Hattiesburg, is on the field for the visitors from the South. And, Randy, what do you like about this quarterback, aside from what we see on paper? Well, he's not real big, and he's not real fast. He's got a good arm, but not a great arm. But what I like about him is he does the ordinary things extraordinarily well. He's very solid, and he just doesn't make many mistakes. Now, one thing he does have is an outstanding set of receivers. Todd Pinkston and Sherrod Gideon have combined for 20 touchdown receptions between them just this year. And on the ground, they've added balance uh, midway through the season. They got a big boost from a true freshman running back by the name of Derek Nixon. We'll see a lot of him here today. Now, as far as the Vandals are concerned, they started the season being ranked 112th out of 112 football-playing schools in Division I. But their run to this bowl game has been remarkable, led by a remarkable talent in sixth-year senior Joel Thomas. He's the playmaker of this offense. Now, he's only 5'6", 216 pounds, but he's the strongest player on the team. And as you can see, when he runs the ball, he runs over you. He doesn't try and run around you. He needs to have a big day because this offense needs to be able to control the ball today. He is Idaho's all-time leading rusher. Well, we're in big sky country where they love their explosive offense. And we've got two top 25 offenses on the field. But they also appreciate devastating defense. Southern Miss and Idaho's next. It's just coming out to the field. Southern Miss traveling 2,500 miles to get to Idaho. You know, it's interesting, their transportation primarily east to west. That's Derek Nix. His situation, well, he doesn't want to go that way. He wants to go north and south. That's the type of runner he is, and the coaches love that. He's a downhill runner, which means he can avoid going side to side and losing valuable merchandise in long losses. As the game goes on, and we'll chart this with him going north to south, he'll wear on the defense, wear them down, and perhaps get some big numbers before it's over. Wayne? Well, thank you very much, uh, Jim. Beautiful setting here in Boise, Idaho, and we've got a great day for football. 42 degrees, not much wind, and yes, a blue turf, the only blue AstroTurf field in the country. Right now, down on that field, a coin toss being uh, administered by Nick Define. In a few moments, we'll know who will kick to whom. And there is a look at Jeff Bauer, eighth season to Southern Miss. Back-to-back -back Conference USA champions. Uh, they were displaced by Tulane atop that uh, loft. And I think that uh, Bauer right there, we had uh, Chris Tormey a second ago. There's Jeff Bauer, eight seasons at Southern Miss. And as I mentioned, the uh, Conference USA champions. Chris Tormey's done an outstanding job at, at Idaho in his fourth season. At the helm in leading this team to the conference, uh, to the championship and the humanitarian bowl appearance. We mentioned two good offenses, Randy Wright, and they like to throw the football. Three wide receiver sets, and the numbers reflect that. 
Well, you see they're very similar here in their statistics, but their style is also very similar. They both run one back, a lot of wideouts. In fact, I don't even know if either one of these teams has a fullback on its roster. <laughs> None listed from what we could tell. And the color is the same for the two teams. And it'll be Southern Miss in the gold shirts, black pants. Black pants, gold, or black shirts, gold pants for Idaho. Idaho, the home team out of the Big West. The difference between these two teams, very similar offensively, but defensively, Southern Miss much the better. Southern Miss only given up 173 yards passing. Will be challenged today by John Walsh in that explosive Idaho passing game. Southern Miss getting set to kick off to start the festivities here this afternoon. And doing the honors to get this second annual bowl game, second annual humanitarian bowl game underway, Brant Hanna. Twin safeties back deep. Lacey is the principal return man on the near side. Jerome Thomas on the far side of your picture there for a moment. And we're set to go. Don't adjust that TV. That is blue turf. That's what it's supposed to be here. Reflecting the big sky. This is Lacey. Good speed. Nice move out to the 30-yard line. Chris Lacey. Chad Williams makes the first tackle of the day. 18-yard return. Let's take a look at the Vandals offense. Joel Thomas, 5'6", 210 pounds, built low to the ground. The wide receiver, Ryan Prestamonico, leading receiver and the team's only returning starter at that position. And the offensive left tackle, Rick DeMullick, believe it or not, was a high school quarterback. He's a first-team All-Big West offensive tackle. Idaho on first down. Here's a look at John Welsh at quarterback. Roberg in motion. Welsh. Ethan Jones on the crossing pattern for a first down and more out to the midfield marker 20 yard gain Larry Watts chased him out for well, just a simple little pass here from Welsh to Jones but Jones of all the receivers he's the clutch guy he's the one that goes after the ball and makes the biggest plays nice little underneath pass Jones sees the openings and then just uses his speed to turn the corner, picks up a nice block there, and a big, very conservative, but a big first down play here for Idaho. First and 10 from the midfield marker. Stombaugh, the tight end in motion. Joel Thomas fumbled the football. Adelius Thomas forced it. Southern Miss recovers, and it's first down for the visitors from Hattiesburg. So the first turnover of the ball game, Southern Miss gets it to the 47. Relatively sure-handed Thomas this time drops the ball right there as Watts, the strong safety, comes up and delivers the blow. Take a look at it here. You'll get a little better view as Thomas has him. And there you see Watts fly by and knock the ball loose with his shoulder and his arm. So the first turnover of the ball game at Southern Miss in great field position from the 48. Lee Roberts looks to the air. Got his man at the 22-yard line. Sherrod Gideon, the first reception of the day for Southern Miss. Bryson Gardner responded, 26-yard gain. Take a look at the Southern Miss offense. Derek Nix, freshman of the year in Conference USA. Gideon had just made the reception, the first catch of the ball game for the offense, and then Frank Firestone, the glue in the middle of that offensive line. A veteran group. First down, football near the 23-yard line. Roberts may be changing the play at the line. Derek Nix. Tripped up by Knowles. Skinner was also there near the 16-yard line. The Idaho defense a bit undersized, but anchored by Will Beck in the middle. A true freshman, 320-pounder. The middle linebacker, Ryan Skinner, heart and soul of this defense. And the cornerback, Dennis Gibbs, best cover man in the Vandals secondary. His matchup on Gideon, 
a key for Idaho. Gain of six on the previous play at second down. Nicks. Not a lot there. He got maybe two or three yards. He is short of the first down, and it'll be third down and short coming up. Nice job by Matt Jasek, number 35 for Idaho, the outside linebacker, chasing Nicks down from the backside and tripping him up, keeping him short of the first down. Chris Tormey in his fourth season at Idaho, as I mentioned, Big West Conference Coach of the Year. It is third down, about a yard to go. Southern Miss. Knicks. Did he get it? I don't think so. Mid portion of that Iowa de uh, Idaho defense responding on the play. Knowles was hit on that tackle, and it looks like he's short, Randy. We take a look at how the penetration comes into the backfield of Southern Miss. And Nofo Inga, number 38 there, does a nice job of not only making contact, but wrapping him up and not letting him push him backwards for the first down. When you see teams with the style of offense that both of these have, the wide open, where the lack of a running game shows up is the short yardage. They don't have the lead blocker and the fullback, and their tight ends aren't used to blocking as well. Well, they're about as close as you can get without making it. About six inches short. I think Southern Miss going to go for this, don't you? Nick? I, I think so. With Nick, a big back, 223 pounds, a guy that gets better as the game goes on. I think they'll go for it here. Southern Miss pretty good on fourth downs. Coach Bauer uh, sends his offense back up to the line of scrimmage. Fourth and inches. Nick, and they stack up that play. Mid portion of that Idaho defense won the battle at the line of scrimmage, a loss of one, and it's first down going the other way. Boy, Wayne, Jeff Mills, the defensive coordinator for Idaho, told us that his two interior linemen have to play big today, and there you see the penetration. They back up that Southern Miss offensive line, and Nix has nowhere to go. Left side of the screen, look at that penetration come back there. And clearly, just a great job by 91. Will Beck taking that offensive blocker and pushing him into the back. But he's a true freshman. 312 pounds true freshman. <laughs> well, a little more than that now. In make that uh, the catch. And did he hang on to it? Yes, he did. Ryan Prestamonico is good hand, leading receiver for the Idaho Vandals. Makes the reception. And they are just short of the first down by about three yards, gain of seven. Preston Monaco, as you said, Wayne, the leading receiver, the only returning starter from last year. They interchange all these guys. They're not afraid to throw to any of them. That time, boy, the ball drops down, but he catches it between his legs and never does hit the ground. <laughs> Four wide receivers set out of the shotgun on second down. Welsh going over the top. And a spectacular grab made out near the midfield marker. Jeff Townsley on the reception. 31-yard gain. Boy, what a great catch, but a perfect throw by Welsh. Also, watch how he stands in the pocket and then steps up, throws a perfect pass, and Townsley does a nice job of adjusting to that ball and going up over the defensive back. Can't throw it any better now. Townsley, the tallest receiver in the Idaho core, a former high school quarterback. First down, 49-yard line, Southern Miss for the Idaho Vandals. Thomas heavy traffic slaughter hit him in the offensive backfield initially and that slowed him down let's take a look at the Southern Miss defense Adelius Thomas we saw him a moment ago All-America 19 tackles behind the line of scrimmage TJ slaughter led conference USA in tackles and Jose Gonzalez second team all-conference has solidified a secondary that lost three starters from last year There's Adelius Thomas getting sent to go defensive end. He's a hybrid defensive end linebacker. Jerome Thomas in the offensive backfield. John Welsh, a short drop under a blitz. Nice adjustment, great catch, and a de devastating hit. Put on the receiver, Preston Monaco, by Jose Gonzalez. 
gain of 12. These vandals are tough, aren't they? Boy, they're taking the hits, but they're hanging on to the ball. You take a look here from coming from the top of the screen, you'll see it as Wall stands back there, sees the blitz coming, stands in there knowing he's going to get hit, but delivers a perfect strike. And then on the other end, you see the hit by Gonzalez, number two, perfectly timed, and you can't coach it any better than that. <laughs> well, I tell you what, puts a chill up your spine just watching that. From the 34, first down. Trying to spin away, quick move up the middle by Joel Thomas for a gain of two. T.J. Slaughter on the stop. Watch the hit on the previous play a moment ago. That is paint on paint and pad on pad, I'll tell you. You <laughs> see Gonzalez get up and celebrate, but Restamonico is the one that gets up, hands the ball, has the first down. <laughs> Indeed he does. Second down and nine here. Preston Monaco, the man in motion. Welsh again under a blitz. Nice release. Jerome Thomas could not slip from Slaughter. Fumble the football as Slaughter gathers it in. Second turnover in the early going of this first quarter for Idaho. The officials are discussing it, but it looked like a fumble before his knee touched down, and that's what they're ruling. So the middle linebacker, T.J. Slaughter, Jr. from Birmingham, Alabama, makes another big play. Shows you a little bit about Slaughter's ability. You're not supposed to be able to bring down a running back as a linebacker in the open field. Here Thomas catches the ball, has some blockers, and there you see the ball just come out loose as Thomas as Slaughter had him around the legs and then forced the fumble. Now this is something that Idaho can ill afford as turnovers in this game. Phil Early, the offensive coordinator, telling us we have to take care of the football to have a chance against Southern Mississippi. They have to win the turnover, and defensively they feel they have to force three of them. So far, they're down two. First down, Lee Robertson company back on the field. This is true freshman Derek Nixon. He's not getting a whole lot. Randy, they've tested the uh, area between the offensive tackles and haven't found a whole lot of running room. Mao Tosi, a basketball player from Anchorage, Alaska, now playing defensive tackle for the Idaho Vandals, stopped that play after a gain of a few. Wayne, if you look at these two teams, the size difference is not that great, but there's a tremendous strength difference. Southern Mississippi, being a more established program, has a much bigger advantage. Idaho, just in Division 1A for four years now, they don't quite have the strength. Two receivers at the bottom of your screen. Roberts looking that way. Roberts looking to make a play, goes back the other way with it. Eddie Shaw, very quick, to the 40-yard line and beyond. Out of bounds at the 36-yard line of the Idaho Vandals. Chased down by Ryan Skinner, 28-yard gain. Nice play by Roberts to buy some time, scramble out of the pocket. He's not the most mobile, but he can buy some time. And then Shaw does a nice job of drifting into the open area. Roberts looking downfield, gets him the ball, and then it just becomes athletic ability, missing the first tackle and making the run. The reaction by the quarterback, yep, we've got a play, boys. This guy will let the players around him make the plays. He himself won't make the mistake. From the 36 and first down, Roberts over the middle, and Eddie Shaw again is the open man. Inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Over to make the tackle, Chris Nofoenga and Matt Jasek. 18-yard gain, and Southern Miss showing that they're going to move the football with authority here today in the early going. And they're doing it through the air. They want to pass early and therefore set up the run. What they would like to do, spread things out, be able to run, middle of the third quarter, let their offensive line take over when they want to run the ball. Gideon's at the top of your screen. Motion from the tight end, Danzler. Nix broke one tackle but could not break three. I believe that was Nofoenga, the linebacker who blew through the hole and got enough of them to bring him down. At the 14-yard line, a gain of four yards. These linebackers, you mentioned Chris Nofoenga, the linebackers are the strength of this Idaho defense, but they're relatively small. J6 only 215 pounds, no Fringa, only 210. They're going to have to stand up to these blocking offensive linemen and backs the entire game. And that offensive line, Randy, senior dominated. Four seniors and a junior on that offensive line for Southern Mississippi. And we've got an injured player down to the field. We'll check on his status in a few moments. 8.02 left to go in this the first quarter, second annual Humanitarian Bowl, no score. ESPN 
Season 2's exclusive presentation of Bowl Week and the 1998 Humanitarian Bowl is brought to you by Hyundai and their full line of exciting new cars. Hyundai, where driving is believing. Beautiful setting here in the foothills of the Rockies. Matt Jasek shaking up on the last play outside linebacker Idaho. And we'll check on his status with Jim Barber. Now, he has been banged up throughout this season. He's only played seven games, but yet is second on the team with nine sacks and first with 13 tackles for loss. So he could be a big, big player that they will miss. Second down and six for Southern Miss. Once again, they have driven inside the 15-yard line of Idaho. The timeout taken by Idaho now. So they'll talk things over. Meanwhile, to give us a chance to tell you, coming up tonight, over on ESPN, the Culligan Holiday Bowl, beginning with bowl game night, 16th ranked Nebraska, number six, Arizona. That should be quite a matchup. It all starts with bowl game night from Tempe, Arizona, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ESPN. You know, Nebraska in danger of losing four games in a season for the first time since 1968 if they don't win tonight. But there's a look at two of the key players you'll be watching. Take a look at Trump Candidate there, maybe the best back that nobody has heard of playing in that tough Pac-10, a 7.3-yard average. Very impressive. Holiday Bowl tonight over on ESPN. Some of the support squad down from uh, Moscow, north of here. And, yeah, the concerned fan right there. Must be a Vandal fan because Southern Miss is on the drive for the second time this afternoon. And once again, as I mentioned, they've driven inside the 15-yard line of Idaho. Second and six here for the Golden Eagles. Nick's the lone setback. Tight end in motion. They go the other way with Nix. Normally the running game designed to follow that motion tight end, but that time they went the other way with a quick hitter. Nix is close to the first down on a gain of almost six yards. Nice job by Nix as he runs to the left here. Skinner, number 44, is going to go right in front of him. Nix keeps his balance and cuts back. And as you get closer to that goal line, every yard becomes harder to get. So that turns into a big gain not only in yardage, but giving them the first down. It is first and goal, seven-yard line of the Vandals. Roberts drills it in, and he's got his man who's taken back on the play inside the five-yard line. That's Hurd, the wide receiver, Kevin Hurd, a senior from West Point, uh, Mississippi. Kevin Hill made the stop. Not a receiver that Roberts has found very often this year. That just being his sixth catch. Gideon and Pinkston are the two that he likes to go to. But as you see in this offense, anybody can fit into any spot. Hurt comes up with a nice catch right there. In the red zone, pretty productive. Well, that's outstanding. 36 conversions on 40 attempts. Second and goal to go, the three. Gideon, the man in motion. Knicks. Denied the end zone. Skinner and Alexikos collaborate on the stop for Idaho. Also uh, in on that tackle for the Vandals, Charles Kinney, a linebacker who comes in on some of the uh, goal line uh, defense. Take a look right here where you'll see them fly over. The linebacker is going to be Skinner and Alex Akos. They're going to come over. 44 Skinner sees it, reads it, gets over there, makes a solid hit. The leading tackler of the last two years, Ryan Skinner, for this Idaho defense. Third down and goal to go at the two-yard line. Roberts. Gideon, touchdown. Two-yard touchdown pass from Lee Roberts to Sherrod Gideon. And Southern Miss on the board first. Well, you ask Idaho's defense to make one stand earlier after the turnover, and they did it, but you can't give an offense this good too many opportunities. And that time, Roberts finds the open receiver and gets the ball in the end zone. Gideon with his 14th touchdown reception this year. Tim Hardaway for the point after, out of the hold of Jamie Purser, the punter. And it's good. Just over six minutes left to go in this first quarter. 
The visitors from Hattiesburg strike first. Lee Roberts, Sherrod Gideon, 7 0 Southern Miss. It's a Southern showdown as Aaron Brooks and the Cavaliers battle Quincy Carter and the Dogs. The Chick fil A Peach Bowl, Georgia, Virginia at 5, Thursday on ESPN. Lee Roberts on the left, Gideon on the right. Sherrod Gideon Roberts off to a 5 for 5 start, 79 yards passing. 7 0 Southern Miss. Just over six minutes to go in this first quarter. Brant Hanna getting sent to kick it away. Jerome Thomas. Boy, he found a seam. He's going to go. Jerome Thomas all the way. Touchdown, Idaho, 98 yards. First career return for a touchdown by Jerome Thomas. What a way to make up for a fumble on their last possession. And what a beautifully set up return. The wall was set up. The blockers were equally distributed from where the where Thomas was. And it was just beautifully executed and returned. Talk about jumping right back into it. <laughs> Here's the point after from Ben Davis. Well, we've got one rolling now. The home forces, the home team, the Idaho Vandals, 98 yards. Jerome Thomas to Pater. Jerome Thomas a moment ago gave the football up to allow Southern Miss to set up a scoring drive. Well, he gets the Vandals right back into the ball game now. And Jeff Bauer and company know they're in a, a football game. 98-yard kickoff return for touchdown by Jerome Thomas. Here's the kickoff by Idaho and Eddie Shaw from the five. Eddie Shaw hit and driven down. Anthony Tenner, a running back, made a stop on the play. Boy, when you dream about return set up like this, it's just beautifully blocked. Take a look right here at the block right here, and then right here, these guys are going to seal this inside. And look at that hole that Thomas has to run through. And there's Skinner, the linebacker, number 44, with a block as well to help spring him down the sidelines. <laughs> Jeff Nelson, our statistician, tells me that's a humanitarian bowl record. <laughs> I think that's a little overkill since this is only the second humanitarian bowl. Five quarters worth of record. Huh? <laughs> but you know what? That one may stand for a while. Change of direction. Dwayne Woods on the carry. A red shirt freshman from Seidel, Louisiana. Chris Nopoinga makes the stop. First down on a gain of 11. See something there that Wayne Woods gives Southern Miss that Derek Nix does not. He's much smaller, 5'9", 191 pounds, but much quicker. And Woods will tend to take the ball to the outside for Nix, he's going to pound it between the tackles. Gideon's out to the top of your screen. And on the bottom, that's Todd Pinkston. Orlando Dantzler, big tight end in motion. They run the opposite way with Woods. Tracked down by Jim Beck. Or Will Beck, I should say, out of the 41-yard line. Gain of two. And Jim Barber, what do you have for us? Wayne, the word was redemption. That's all the players were saying to Joel Thomas over here after the fumble and then the touchdown return. I think Randy had brought that up moments ago. I've never seen this happen after a long touchdown run or a big play. One of the players came over and kissed him. <laughs> and, and Thomas didn't seem to mind, so obviously the Idaho team really into the game with the game time. Yeah, they're a close bunch of guys. There's no doubt about that. Second down and eight. For Southern Miss at the Golden Eagle 41. Roberts, nice throw! Oh, and Pinkston could not hang on! They found a seam in the deep secondary near the 25-yard line of Idaho. First incompletion of the day, and that's a drop 
on Pinkston. Boy, a, a rare drop by Pinkston comes in with 52 receptions, but this is the matchup Southern Miss wants. Their wideouts against number 30, Ige Ivero. Wide open, beautiful pass. Pinkston's got to make that catch. If he does, could be in the end zone. And that incompletion not on Lee Roberts. Third down for Southern Miss. Roberts under a blitz. Throw wide of the mark intended for Gideon, and Roberts just got rid of it. He was being pressured on the play. No Foenga, well-timed on his blitz from the far side. Tulsi also in there as well. Well, you could tell, Wayne, before Roberts took the snap, they were confused because Idaho was moving around so much. There was some confusion. Who had to block whom? Who was going to come? You can see Roberts here talking to his wide receiver. There was a mix-up. Nice job by Idaho confusing him. Jamie Purser's first punt of the day. Vern Bernard is the deep man for the Idaho Vandals. His brother plays for the San Francisco Giants. High snap to Purser. Nice kick. Bernard inside the 10. That ball kept carrying. Back to the 5, and here comes the return. Great change of direction. Good tackle by Larry Watts, a safety to prevent any further gain. 55-yard punt, outstanding punt. 13-yard return, and it'll be first down at the 17-yard line now for Idaho. Chris Tormey talked about his swashbuckling quarterback, John Welsh. Uh, John Welsh does not uh, lack for confidence. Uh, he believes that he can go out and win any game he lines up in, and, and he makes plays. He moves our football team. Our guys believe in him. He's charismatic. Uh, you know, he's got some ability to, to throw on the run and to avoid the rush. And, and uh, since he had his first opportunity, really, against North Texas, uh, he picked it up and, uh, and ran with it and has, uh, hasn't looked back. Joel Thomas trying to get to the outside. A late flag thrown on the play. Scott had the coverage uh, that time for Southern Mississippi. Cedric Scott, a defensive end. Also support from Terrence Parrish. There is a flag down. One thing Chris Tormey said about his quarterback there is he's confident beyond his time. Illegal block is the call that we're getting from Nick Define. This is going to back Idaho up even closer to their goal line with two fumbles already offensively and a penalty here. They need to start getting their timing back, and that happens sometimes between the end of a season and a bowl. Block in the back. During the play. Ten-yard penalty. First down. Take a look right here. It's coming out for, I for Idaho. That's where the illegal block in the back is going to be. Really a, not a necessary block. He wasn't going to be involved in the play anyway. Jeremy Wallace, the sophomore center, guilty of the infraction. Now it's first and long. Football back inside the 10, and they took too much time to get that playoff. Or did, no, nope. apparently a timeout was called, but by Southern Miss. See, Adelius Thomas was trying to signal for a timeout. I don't think they had the personnel on the field they wanted for that five wide out look. Now, let me ask you this, though. At that this point in time, you're talking first and 20, 342 to go in the first quarter, even if you don't have the right personnel. Well, the problem if you don't have the right personnel is you could give up the long play if you don't have those wide outs covered. I suppose. Coming up, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Top-ranked Tennessee facing number two Florida State for the national championship. That's coming up Monday, January 4th, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on ABC. And don't forget, this is the game, January 4th, ABC Sports and ESPN.com brings you the first ever Enhanced TV during this Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Don't miss it. Enhanced TV. Get, log on in your computer. You can uh, look up all the statistics and what's happening during the game. You can get players profiles you could uh, go interactive a little bit and uh, maybe call some plays so you're gonna be right there with your computer aren't for those you? of us who don't know how to turn a computer on enjoy the TV <laughs> you'll be able to do that as well there's a daily is Thomas he did call the timeout you're right Randy but you know when you look at first and 20 you think well why take a timeout here let's just take a chance to get this play off but you're right a big play could happen and we've seen a couple of them already in the ball game today 
So here we are, first and 20 once again for the Idaho Vandals, backed up inside their eight-yard line. Joel Thomas. Slaughter, the middle linebacker, got enough of him to bring him down out near the 14-yard line, a gain of about six yards. This is where you really have to be careful if you're John Welch. You don't want a mistake. You're young. You, you have a lot of confidence. Sometimes you think you're a little better than you are. And going against the Southern Miss defense that comes in with 52 sacks, make sure you don't throw the ball away to avoid something, wind up throwing an interception. Pass to Monaco, the bottom of your screen right there. He's usually a go-to guy. Second down. Still long yarded situation for the Vandals. Welsh under immediate pressure gets it away. Joel Thomas. Boy, he did well to get close to the line of scrimmage. I believe he came up a yard short. We'll see where they mark it. Verdell made the stop on the play. Adelius Thomas all over the quarterback. John Welsh, who made a pretty good adjustment, Randy. What a great job, though, by Welsh to get the ball off. Here you see on the screen, they're going to let the defensive lineman come through here. Welsh gets the ball off just in time, and when you got Adelius Thomas coming at you, that can be scary. Well, the market is a gain of about a yard, third and 13. And now the late substitutions coming into the game for the Vandals as Welsh works out of the shotgun. Five receivers set. This is where you got to cover the wide receivers. Welsh pumped once, and down he goes. The middle linebacker, T.J. Slaughter out of Birmingham, Alabama. Puts an end to this offensive series for Idaho. Well, when, when you vacate the backfield and you don't have a back back there to block, your linebackers sometimes come free. Here he's going to come from right here. You see, he's got nobody to cover. So as he comes through, nobody picks him up. Really a pretty easy sack when you're coming through and no one's blocking you. Mike O'Neill leads the big west in net average of over 38 yards just did get this one away off a low snap Eddie Shaw inside the Vandal 40 is tracked down by Ryan Skinner near the 37 yard line of Idaho so Southern Miss getting its best field position to start a drive here today 43 yard punt 11 yard return Southern Miss puts a lot of pressure on the quarterback with their active defensive front seven. And what this shows you, the 53 sacks, the, the 53rd one coming right here, 114 tackles for loss. Their opponents are facing second and third down and very long a lot of the time. Just under two minutes to go. Jeff Bauer has sent his offense back out of the field. We are first quarter here in Boise and tied in seven apiece. Southern Miss, an outstanding opportunity. First down from the 37-yard line of Idaho. Roberts, lots of time into traffic and nearly picked away. Kevin Hill almost picked it off. Roberts is used to having plenty of time. He's only been sacked 14 times this year for a team that throws the ball as much as they do. That's very, very good. Here, the reason it's not complete is there's such good coverage. You see, though, Roberts has plenty of time, can look all over. Only two men were out in the pattern, though. That's why you can see so many black shirts around one goal. Boy, he tried to thread the needle on that one. I don't know about that throw. Brett Favre, maybe. Lee Roberts, no. Hey, Brett Favre, not at this stage. <laughs> Brett Favre today, maybe. Yeah. Roberts over the top, the fade. Pinched in, great move. Out of bounds inside the 10 yard line. Bryson Gardner forced him out. 27 yard pass play and a fine move made by Pinkston. Idaho trying to cover Pinkston with their strong safety, Kevin Hill. And Roberts does a beautiful job of throwing this ball to the outside. He gives Pinkston plenty of room to adjust to it and run away from Hill. It is a strong safety. You just can't miss those kind of tackles. Nope. As a result, first and goal once again for Southern Miss. Third time they've been down inside the Vandal 10-yard line in this first quarter. Sherrod Gideon in motion. Derek Nix. Vandals stack it up after a gain of a yard or two. Well, we mentioned Brett Favre a moment ago. And of course, he preceded by several quarterbacks. Lee Roberts down at Hattiesburg. And we'll Take a look at their comparison a little bit later. Roberts has replaced Favre atop many of the uh, passing charts. 
And when you, Southern Miss. When you think of Favre, he was in college much like he is today. Very physical, great athletic ability. Roberts, though, although he's had a lot of success, not quite the physical specimen. Yeah, much different quarterback. Second down and the goal to go situation. Here comes Nix. Touchdown, Derek Nix. Eight yard touchdown run. Southern Miss back on top, 13 to 7. What a great block by Eddie Shaw, number 25, the wideout. He was the one that freed Nix towards to the to the corner. Gave him an, an open lane. Touchdown. Nice, nice job. Nice blocking all the way around. A short drive compared to their previous two for Southern Miss. 37 yards. Now the point after. It's blocked in the middle of the line. Hardaway's PAT is blocked, and the score remains 13-7 Southern Miss. Sometimes those things that happen like that late in the first quarter come back to haunt you late in the fourth. We'll see. It's a second special teams play that's worked out very well for Idaho. See if we can pick it up. You can see Shaw right here coming from his from his wide receiver position. Watch the block right here. And he knocks him into the second man, which throws him off balance, and therefore Nix can get to the corner. Tenth rushing touchdown for Derek Nix. That was one block, and there was another block on the ensuing point after touchdown. We mentioned the uh, two quarterbacks at Southern Miss, Roberts now, and Brett Favre, 10 years ago, led this program to a 10-2 record. Take a look at the numbers in their career. You can see how well Roberts compares to what Favre did, especially in the quarterback rating, 135 to 115. Now, how they come up with that, who knows? But 135 has got to be better than 115. You know, if you could log on to dot .com somewhere, you could figure that out, Randy. The quarterback rating system, I mean. Can't we ask our stats guy? Yeah, well, that's why we have Jeff Nelson with us. <laughs> It is a beautiful day. Temperature expected to get into the 50s here in Boise, Idaho, the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. And Boate for the 30th of December, that's not bad. 36-yard, four-play scoring drive. And it's obvious that if Idaho is going to hang in this ballgame, it looks like they're going to be in a track meet. Well, they need to do something offensively. They need to be able to run the ball and keep their defense off the field. So they need a long drive. Hannah's kick is high. And Jerome Thomas again from the two. Thomas slips this time as he tried to cut behind a block, again being set up by Michael Moody. Jim Barber is patrolling the sidelines. Jim? Well, guys, you were talking earlier about the timeout that Mississippi, Southern Mississippi had taken. In fact, remains that they took it because they were having some difficulty with the substitution process. I talked to the officials before the game, and they said, you know, Idaho is stretching the rule to the limit, but they are the rules. As long as players come off, players come back on and get inside the numbers, that's okay. But they're going to keep a close watch on it, and they've been preparing the last month or so to make sure they stay within the rules. Well, what a lot of opposing coaches talk about is the spirit of the rules a lot of times. This is Townsley on the reception. Out to the 24-yard line, but again, if it's within the rules, spirit or not, uh, you can do it. Well, they feel they have to do something because they can't match up with a lot of teams because they're smaller. They may not be as strong, and they're not as quick, so they try to do something to even those tables, and this is what has worked for them. Time is winding down in this first quarter. Might be the final play of the first. Here comes the substitution you see at the top of your screen. Four new or three new receivers come in. Three go out. They've actually added an extra tight end. And they did not get the playoff before the first quarter comes to a close. Well, we've seen some uh, efficient offense being run by Lee Roberts and Southern Mississippi on two scoring drives, and we've seen a kickoff explosion. But Southern Miss, at the end of one, has a 14-7 lead. Humanitarian Bowl from Boise, Idaho. 
foothills of the Boise Range. Southern Mississippi leading 13 to 7 over Idaho. And the Vandals second down and a little bit less than five yards to go from their 25. Stombaugh, the tight end in motion. Joel Thomas forcing his way, but the Vandals have been unable to get their ground game going. This time, a first down on a gain of six. Good second effort by Joel Thomas. Take a look at the numbers in the first quarter, Randy. And really, uh, again, a key for Idaho here today will be running the football and trying to get this ground game on track. Well, I thought they needed to do that coming into today. Joel Thomas is their playmaker. Minus three yards rushing and the two turnovers. Those things really jump out and grab you and tell the story of the first quarter. 13 to 7. Southern Miss on top. Idaho first down. Roberg, the tight end. The man went in motion. Welsh. Lacey and the pass short of the mark in terms of Lacey and the Gonzalez the safety almost caught up with it for Southern Miss near the 45 yard line Jose Gonzalez who has helped solidify the defensive secondary for Southern Miss second team all conference selection he had a great year too. a hundred tackles from the free safety position that's a lot of tackles he's been a big surprise for them moved over to the free safety position this year a, a, a senior adapted well to that position and has been their most pleasant surprise back there in the secondary. Gonzalez gets set second down now for the Idaho Vandals. Ten yards to go. Out of the shotgun. They screen it out. Unable to get on track that time is Ryan Prestamonico and he lost a couple of yards back to the 28 yard line. Derek Scott reacted quickly on the play. Derek and Cedric Scott. DeQuincy Scott on that defensive front. You got a lot of Scots in that defense. If you just yell out Scots, you're probably going to get it right if you're talking <laughs> yes. about their defense. Derek and Eric are uh, brothers. They're not related to DeQuincy. Third down, about 13. Running the reverse. And nowhere to go and losing his footing on the play. Willie Alderson. Alderson, who offers a lot of quickness, a former running back now playing a wing back position for Idaho. And it's going to be fourth down as the Vandal ground game goes into reverse. A loss of about four yards. Trying to use Southern Mississippi speed against them with the reverse there. But Derek Scott, we just talked about him. A nice job of staying home at his defensive end position. Didn't fall for it. Was there to help on the play. Michael Neal needs to get off another long putt here. And he just did get that kick away from Leo Barnes. Shaw. Made the first man miss. It's a spin move out near the 33-yard line where it'll be a first down for Southern Miss. 40-yard but seven-yard return. Southern Miss 13-7 early in the second. Southern Miss leading by six second quarter. And the Golden Eagles on offense. They have moved the football effectively here. And on first down, Southern Miss almost seven yards per crack. Four wide receivers set. Single back offense behind Lee Roberts on first down from his 33. A little option. Derek Nix made the first man miss and down he goes. Well, a big triple header coming up on ESPN tomorrow, New Year's Eve. It all begins with bowl game day from Tempe, Arizona, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific time. The AXA Equitable Liberty Bowl, BYU against undefeated 10th ranked Tulane at 1.30. The Chickapill Peach Bowl, 19th ranked Georgia against Virginia at 5 Eastern. And then the Sanford Independence Bowl, Mississippi versus Texas Tech, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time from Freeport, Louisiana. What All coming up tomorrow on ESPN. What a year Sean King, the quarterback for Tulane, had. Outstanding. Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl tomorrow in the middle of that trio. Now here's the handoff. Quickly off the left side is Derek Nix for short yardage. Mal Tosi and Will back on the stop. The way this whole game has been played, 
with Southern Miss's advantage on the other side of the 50-yard line in Idaho territory. Idaho needs to create something defensively. They need to give their defense a rest, give their offense a little momentum because Southern Miss is starting to do what they want to do offensively. Very successful on first down, mixing in the pass with successful runs to Derek Nix. Third down about five now, and Roberts in the shotgun. Tight rope type catch on the near sideline to the 47 yard line of Idaho, a 15 yard gain. Boy, that was pretty. He wanted to go to his left the entire time, throws the ball perfectly, and Shaw, as you see, does a great job not only getting one foot in, but getting both feet in. Shaw, their third receiver, not a lot of catches this year, but he's made some big plays today. Great job getting both those feet, although you only needed one. Southern Miss once again in Idaho territory and Roberts changing the play at the line on first down from the Vandal 47. Blocked up into the air by Nick Alexikos, the defensive end, and he almost had a shot at intercepting that one. We're at the foothills of the Rockies and the state capital of Idaho, Boise, Idaho, Broncos Stadium. Wayne Larrabee, along with Randy Wright and Jim Barber. This is the second annual Humanitarian Bowl, Southern Miss and Idaho. When you only drop back three steps, you've got to get the arms down of the defensive lineman. That time you saw Alexa Coast standing straight up, jumped right in the eyesight and knocked the ball down on that Roberts pass. Nice job by Alexa Coast, anticipating and making the play. Second and 10. Roberts on play action. Pinkston! Running away from the crowd. Ibarro makes a touchdown saving tackle at the four-yard line. First and goal, Southern Miss. Todd pinched in 42 yards. We saw this play earlier where Roberts threw a perfect pass and Pinkston dropped it. They get the matchup they want again. Pinkston against Ibarro. Perfect pass again. This time Pinkston catches it and then becomes a runner. Nice job of breaking some of those tackles, and Ibarro catches up to him and brings him down. And how about that reaction? Pinkston showing a little bit of that vertical on the celebration. First and goal. Nix down to the two-yard line on a pickup of two or three yards. One thing that really has to impress you about Derek Nix, a true freshman, 6'1", 223 pounds, comes into this game, Wayne, having carried the ball 226 times. That's a lot of times for that young a player to take that kind of pounding. He's only lost 30 yards in 226 rushing attempts overall this season. Coaches tell us he gets better as the game goes on. Franklin in motion. The true freshman from Atala, Alabama. One yard touchdown plunge. Take a look. Set up to the outside. Nix cuts it back. Beautiful blocking and nobody there in the black jersey to put on a hit and keep Nix out of the end zone. And now Southern Miss is really starting to get into a rhythm offensively. Here they're lining up going for two after missing the extra point last time they scored. Roberts out of the shotgun, Nix alongside. And score it. Gideon, the reception right at the goal line, shoved out of the end zone, but they score the two-point conversion, and it is 21-7. to Derek Nix, the true freshman, elevates into the end zone and adds to the lead. Boise. A quiet western city?
suffocating Nittany Lion D looks to contain the golden arm of Tim Couch in the Wildcats. The Outback Bowl, Kentucky versus Penn State at 11, Friday on ESPN. Three touchdowns already for Southern Miss and a 21-7 lead. This is a very well-conditioned football team, not only having to practice and get ready in camp in the blast furnace of Southern Mississippi, but also their head coach cut back on the practice time when the season started. And this is interesting. The team started off 1-3, and three, but Jeff Byers said, look, nothing wrong physically. It's just mental. Let's cut back on the practice time at work. The team has won 6-7, of seven, and Wayne and Randy on its way, at least so far, to win number 7 of 8. Absolutely, Jim, and you know Southern Miss has won five uh, consecutive winning seasons, but it's won seven in a row over Big West schools, and the average score 33 to 17 in those wins over the Big West. And right now, off to a 21 to seven start. Kick off by Hannah. Jerome Thomas follows the wedge. Out to the 20. Seven, make it the 28-yard line. 14-yard return. Derek Nix reaches the end zone to cap the 67-yard seven-play drive. Pinkston's 42-yard reception set them up in, inside the five-yard line. Nix, two touchdowns today. That's a typical Southern Miss drive. Some big plays through the air, then give it to Nix when you get down by the goal line. Offensive coordinator Larry Keck was saying we like to kind of set things up with the pass and then close the deal with a run. Idaho wanted to do just the opposite. Run early and then throw. They're not having much success on the ground. They need to go to the pass maybe a little earlier than they thought. The Vandals at their own 28. Play action. Welsh. Nice play. Ethan Jones out near the 48-yard line. It's a first down. Gain of 21 yards. Nice catch, but a little bit more accurate throw, and this becomes a touchdown. Here you see as Jones catches this ball, he's already behind the safety there. If he can catch that in stride and not have to leave his feet, he walks into the end zone with that. That was real soft coverage by Deshaun Mallard, who's a second-team All-Conference USA selection. You see the late substitutions by Idaho. It's first down. They mark it to the 49. Welsh, right through the hands of Lacey. And Randy, he was kind of looking back into the sun at point blank range, and I'm not sure he picked up that ball quick enough, but at any rate, the incompletion makes it second and ten. This is where you really have to be aware as a quarterback. When your receiver's coming back to you, you have to throw the ball in the body. you got to give him a chance to catch it because he's coming to you pretty quickly, and when you throw the ball hard to the outside, if you don't hit him in the body, chances are it's not going to be caught. And that uh, quickens the miles per hour on the pass, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> Second down. Stop all the man in motion. The rolling Welsh. Little pop fly. Pass interference coming up. Ethan Jones, the antenna receiver. It looked like Deshaun Mallard took him down. Looked like pretty good coverage up until the end where Mallard clearly interfered with him. Welsh rolling out, really throws this ball up for grabs. You see Adelius Thomas putting the pressure on back there. Off balance, Welsh just throws it up. And Mallard's in pretty good shape until the very end where he just pulls Jones back. So the penalty, first Miss Southern Mississippi penalty. Gives Idaho the football to the 35-yard line. Randy, what they're trying for is Ethan Jones, 6'1", 190, on Deshaun Mallard, who's about 5'10", and 185. And they have had success with that. I think they'll continue to go back to it until Mallard can show he's going to stop him. First down to the 35 of Southern Miss. Welsh. Got a man wide open and overshot him on the play. He had the freshman tight end, Jeff Franks, wide open. Boy, Gerald Mumford was putting some pressure on Welsh, forced him to get out of the pocket. Right here, Welsh wants to get rid of the ball, but can't. Mumford continues, and look at he's wide open and just puts a little bit too much steam on it. Can't get to it. You've got to take advantage of those plays when they come up because you don't have open receivers that often. Welsh, 9 of 12, 96 yards so far. Two turnovers, two fumbles lost by Idaho. 
in the first quarter put them behind the eight ball. Welsh again going deep. Pass just overthrown, intended for Ryan Prestamonico, who was well covered down the sidelines. Boy, I'll tell you what, excellent coverage by Darian Brutley and help from the safety, Jose Gonzalez. We can't cover any better than Brutley did right here. Not really any room for Welsh to get the ball in there. Going deep on this drive, though, maybe back some of these defenders off, and again, just a hair beyond the reach of Preston That's a pretty good throw, isn't it? It was <laughs> a hair too far, but really, you just got to let the receiver run under it. It's so hard to be perfect when you're throwing the ball in that type of pattern. Redshirt freshman John Welsh facing third and ten. And a timeout's going to have to be called by Idaho. And they were looking to either change the play or personnel a little bit too late. Southern Miss has the lead in the second. Well, the Golden Eagles had a long way to travel from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, all the way up here to Boise, Idaho. Rushing yardage, Idaho, two yards, minus two yards rushing. And their intent, as Randy mentioned, was to start on the ground and work their offense in the ground game possess the football but how much can you invest on the ground game when you're it's not working now they go to the air again they have not passed yet on this drive pass was tipped good adjustment made couldn't quite come up with the catch ryan prestamonico the intended receiver and he couldn't quite get back to it well you asked wayne how much can you invest in the run when it's not working and this was the sixth pass in this drive, nice move right here by Preston Monaco. He only needs a few yards for the first, and the ball gets tipped at the line. It just doesn't get out there. Here you'll see the ball get tipped right there by 45, Brian Bell, and that prevents the completion. 52-yard field goal attempt coming up from Ben Davis. His long is 55. He had a 62-yarder, which was a junior college record, though. And the kick is blocked. Covered up at the 42-yard line where Southern Miss will take over. So many times when you try a long field goal, you have to kick it low and it gets blocked at the line of scrimmage, and that's what we saw there. It looked like Adelius Thomas may have gotten that kick. Take a look. The snap and the hold are fine, and just penetration right there. That may have been blocked if it had been a 25-yard field goal, much less from where he kicked it from. And I think you're right, Wayne. I think it was 97. Adelius Thomas gets the interior penetration and gets up there and blocks it. So it'll be first down now for Southern Miss at the 42-yard line. That pass knocked down incomplete. Mal Tulsi, 6'6", 270 out of Anchorage, Alaska. Center on the basketball team at Idaho and playing his first year of football since his high school days. He's a senior in basketball. He's a junior in football. Well, they tell him, act like you're going up to block a shot in basketball and get your hands up there. And heck, that one hit him right in the face mask. He didn't even need to get his arms up there. His ninth block pass of the season. So he's doing a good job of getting up there and acting like that. I wonder if he blocks as many shots on the basketball court. I would think so. You, if you're Idaho, you hope so. Although 6'6 six, six at center is pretty short in Division I basketball. Shaw latches on incomplete. Could not latch on long enough. Coming up over on ABC Saturday night, the FedEx Orange Bowl, Donovan McNabb and the Syracuse Orange Men meet the Florida Gators live at 8 Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on ABC, the home of the Bowl Championship Series. What a quarterback Donovan McNabb is, too. I don't know if there's more uh, a more complete quarterback in the country. Well, I'll tell you what, Drew Brees was pretty impressive last night for Purdue in that upset win over Kansas State. Third down. Roberts under a blitz. Boy, they picked it up well. Deflected incomplete right in and out of the hands of Gardner, who almost picked it off. Bryson Gardner. He made a break on the ball like he was the wide receiver going for it. Well, I think he focused in on Roberts' eyes and read where Roberts wanted to go. Excellent job of picking up the blitz by the Southern Miss team. And there you see Robert staring it down, and Gardner gets the break. And, boy, you just got to make those plays. You need to force something to happen. 
it give your offense good field position and they're another missed opportunity well they continue to cover Pinkston with a uh, safety fake punt complete pass to Adelius Thomas and we've seen it all how about that Jamie Purser with the pass to Adelius Thomas and it's a first down Southern Miss inside the 40 the 38 yard line of Idaho a 20 yard play when you have so long to prepare between the end of the season and the bowl game you can do some different things an unusual formation it draws the attention everywhere else that he may be the last guy you think <laughs> is going to catch the ball how about that your fast rushing defensive end linebacker Adelius Thomas on the receiving end of that aerial from Jamie Purser. He does just about everything else. Why not let him catch the ball? Just so. Well, Adelius Thomas dances in celebration on the sidelines. We've got a break of the action. 8-13 to go first half. Southern Miss on the lead with momentum. Dalius Thomas on the receiving end of a pass from Jamie Purser, the punter, out of punt formation. Purser's now three for three in passing. That's a pretty good quarterback rating. Pretty good quarterback rating. You're right. I don't think Roberts has anything to worry about. No, I don't think so. First down, football at the 38-yard line of Idaho for Southern Miss, already leading 21 to 7. Second quarter, Roberts. That ball appeared to be tipped. Gideon, the intended receiver, he had slipped and fell anyway. Well, Chris Tormey pacing anxiously on the sidelines. This is why. His Vandals, two fumbles, a blocked field goal, minus two rushing yards, and they could not afford either the turnovers or the two yards, minus two yards rushing. They felt they had to play a near-perfect game, and they had to count on Southern Miss to make some mistakes. As it's unfolded here, it's been just the opposite. Idaho's been the one making the mistakes, and Southern Miss has taken advantage of all of them. Second and ten. Roberts changing the play with the Southern Miss line of scrimmage. Quick count, three-step drop. This is Pinkston. Chase to the chalk marks. Just inside the 35-yard line. Gain of about three, maybe four. Chris Nofoinga, the linebacker over to make the stop on the play. Nofoinga may be the best athlete on this Idaho team. He's 5'10", 210 pounds, very fast, 4'4". He's even run a 4'3", 9". He's had tremendous personal obstacles that he's overcome. And everybody you talk to that has anything to do with Idaho says he's just a wonderful, great kid to know. Overcame a childhood of abuse to become a, quite a citizen here in Idaho. Third down. Roberts going for it all and overshot Gideon in the deep secondary in, at the 10-yard line. Well, one of the reasons I think he overshot him is Gideon saw two black jerseys back there and slowed up rather than stretching out, going for that ball, and it was forced in there. I don't know that Gideon would have been able to make the catch, ball being forced into double coverage down there, but he didn't give it a try, and Roberts maybe misread that coverage. That play's been open a couple times. This time it wasn't. Well, it's fourth down and about seven, a little bit less than seven yards to go in this territory. Southern Miss leading by two touchdowns going for it. Roberts under a blitz. Gideon could not make the first man miss. Rick GM Petrie from Spokane, Washington to the open field made the stop on Sherrod Gideon short of the first down. Boy, this is the matchup you want if you're Southern Miss. The blitz is coming from the top of the screen. Robert sees it, gets rid of it. You've got Gideon one-on-one, -on -one, and GM Petrie does a great job of keeping his feet, then making the sure tackle and wrapping Gideon up around the legs. Nice open field tackle against a very elusive wide receiver. GM Petrie, a sophomore, was a defensive back last year. He's a coach's son, very smart, and as we just saw a moment ago, an efficient tackler. So Idaho thwarts that Southern Miss drive, and the Vandals take over at their 30. Play action and Wells going over the top. A spectacular catch. No, they say he trapped it on the ground. The tight end, Travis Dumba, just inside the Southern Miss 40. Almost a highlight film reception. Boy, what an effort. Dumba going up from the, for the ball over Parrish's back. 
as we saw earlier with Prestamonico catching the ball down by the ground between his legs. This time, Stamba almost catches it on his back. This will be a very good angle to see where the ball comes down. There you see it's on his shoulder pad, and <laughs> boy, it's tough to tell whether that one hit the ground or whether he got the arm underneath it. Great effort either way. Well, show for his last five passing, facing second and ten. A stomp on the man in motion, a blitz up front. And they roll Welsh. And a man open, Prestamonico, first down. 46-yard line of Idaho, 16-yard game. Nice call by Phil Early, the offensive coordinator. Let's start moving Welsh out of the pocket. Southern Miss getting some pressure up the middle, forcing him to throw off the balance. This time they move him out. He's got good blockers in front of him. Perfect touch on this ball. Nice catch. You know, Randy, I'm impressed with both quarterbacks and their deep throws. They do seem to have nice touch. They throw a very catchable ball in the deep patterns. And when you've got soft coverage, you don't need to drill the ball in there. You can throw it soft and let your receivers adjust to it. First down from the 46 for the Vandals in their own territory. Joel Thomas escapes to the outside. First down. 43-yard line of Southern Miss, and that was all. Joel Thomas, the senior from Port Angeles, Washington. 11-yard gain. Well, the Vandals have been throwing lately, but here you see they want to run over here, but the jerseys are just solid right there, and then Thomas winds up cutting this back. Nice job at the point of attack by Southern Miss, but they don't close down the backside and Thomas is quick enough to get right through there. That's instinct, a running back's instinct it's, it's right It's vision. There. It's vision to see it and the instinct to know to hit it. Welsh under pressure. And the linebacker Ty Trahan, all-conference USA backer, makes the sack outside the 45 of the 48-yard line. Rare pass pattern there where every receiver went deep. There was nobody short for Welsh to dump the ball off to. So when you're going to run everybody deep, your quarterback's got to hold on to the ball longer, and you've got to have the protection. Trayan, as you said, gets through there and finally makes the sack. Welsh either has to throw it away, or he's got to get better time. Second sack for Southern Miss. Second and long. Welsh quarterback draw. Welsh got a great block from Anthony Fuentes and gets inside the 40 to the 36-yard line. Gonzalez and Trahan on the stop. Penalty markers down to the play. Well, take a look right here as the guards are going to come up on this quarterback draw. Excellent, excellent block. 61 where this sees slaughter. Great job of blocking him. Then you see the face mask right there coming at the end of the play. Looks like Gonzalez on the face mask. And, and this will make for a first down. Football now at the 32-yard line. Jeff Bauer now begins to pace anxiously. His team, Southern Mississippi, in control of this game throughout. Now the Vandals making a concerted drive. Down 21-7. Joel Thomas in motion. They vacate the backfield. Welsh. Nice catch by Thomas to elude the linebacker. Inside the 20. He's got a first down to the 18-yard line. A gain of 13. Very well-designed play. You bring Thomas across in motion. You know it's man-to-man -man coverage, so they're going to trail him from the back, and now you need to get the ball out in front of him, try and hit him in stride. That didn't happen, but Thomas was strong enough here to make the play and break the tackle. You hit him in stride, he runs for a lot farther. First down. Vandals at the 17-yard line. Welsh takes short. And didn't fool anybody up front. Gerald Mumford piercing through from his nose tackle position. Got a flag down up top. And it's going to be offsides against Southern Miss. Here, an uh, unusual formation, hoping to catch Southern Miss a little confused. It did draw them offsides, but when you've got nobody in the backfield, your offensive lineman can't give up any penetration. There's no back there to help pick it up. 
Offsides, as you mentioned the call against Southern Miss, that wipes out the sack. So Idaho's first trip inside the Southern Miss red zone has penetrated to the 13-yard line. From the shotgun, five receiver set. Welsh. Townsley, touchdown! John Welch there. This was the first drive that he really got into a rhythm. You could see his confidence grow. He got time to throw. Just a beautiful pass. A lot of air underneath it. And Townsley, a nice job of reaching back with that one hand and making that catch. You see that very loose coverage forced him the opportunity to do that. Point after attempt is good. 70 yards and seven plays. 12-yard touchdown pass to Townsley. Earlier, Jim Barber had an opportunity to visit with David Robinson, the latest induction to the World Sports Humanitarian Hall of Fame. David Robinson is synonymous with greatness in sports, but also greatness outside the lines. Recently inducted into the World Sports Humanitarian Hall of Fame. David, what's that mean to you? I mean, it's an incredible honor. I, you know, uh, it's uh, kind of a weird thing, though. It's sort of like somebody stand there and saying, you know, you stand up there and accept the words like saying, I I I'm humble, you know, but <laughs> sounds really stupid. But, you know, if it inspires people to uh, to really contribute to their community and they see an example, then, uh, then I'm, I'm proud to stand here and, and, ex and receive the award. You know, I, I still don't think I've done it nearly enough to, to impact us, even San Antonio. But, but, uh, but if it inspires other people to get involved, then I think it's a great thing. You and your wife created the David Robinson Foundation. Why did you go about doing that? Well, mainly because the the community had invested a lot in us i mean not just financially but they've supported us the whole time that we've lived there and they've been fantastic so we really just wanted to reflect uh, jesus christ in the community we wanted to minister to people in real simple ways uh if they didn't have food give them food you know education uh provide things for them so that's what we uh, started our foundation uh, with that concept and it's it's grown and really beyond what we had imagined it would be Finally, the uh, $64,000 question, when are you going back to work? Uh, uh, I hope we go back to work real soon. I, you know, I, I know there's a bunch of players out there that are um, chomping at the bit to get back on the floor. And, but, um, but unfortunately, you know, this is a business, and, uh, and you've got to get the papers signed before the business starts. Uh, uh, it's, it's really an unfortunate situation. I mean, I, personally, I, I, I don't understand the owner's logic. Um, when I look at all the facts... That, you know, when I look at the things surrounding the NBA and the success that we've had as a league, uh, I'm, I'm lost with their logic. But, but um, you know, players understand we're going to take a step backwards. I mean, our salary is going to get cut. The question is, you know, how much? And, uh, and, and, and I think that, you know, both sides just need to be reasonable as far as how, back, how far back we're going to go. David Robinson, a pleasure talking with you. All right. Well, thank you very much. Here are the inductees into the World Sports Humanitarian Hall of Fame this year. Jackie Joyner, Kersey, David Robinson, as we just saw, and Pele. I had to ask Jim how many chairs he was standing on as he did that interview. <laughs> <laughs> Only three. Bobble dropped, but recaptured. This is Dwayne Woods, and he did well just to get out to the 20-yard line. Turf a little slick out there. Anthony Tenner made the stop along with Whitney Mayer. The scoring drive for Idaho, and their first offensive scoring drive of the afternoon. 70 yards and seven plays. Townsley capped it on a 12-yard touchdown reception. And finally a run, an 11-yard run by Joel Thomas in the middle of that drive helped to get things going. We are at... Bronco Stadium in Boise, Idaho. At the Boise foothills of the Rocky Mountains, Wayne Larrabee along with Randy Wright and Jim Barber. And we've got a ball game here with just over five minutes to go in this first half. Southern Miss with the lead and the ball. First and 10 from the Golden Eagle 22. Derek Nix cuts it back. Across the 40, fumble the football. Picked up by Rayner. Tom Rayner, the fumble recovery, and Idaho takes over in Southern Miss territory.
Well, you could feel that momentum swing when Idaho scored. There, they're giving up the big play, but they forced their first turnover of the day, and now their offense, with a lot of confidence after the success of their last drive, will take over in wonderful field position. 45-yard line of Southern Miss, and the Idaho Vandals come back out of the field, and Jeff Bauer debating perhaps that maybe his running back was down before that ball came loose. We get a look at it here. Nope. That was an excellent call by the officials. That ball was loose before the knee went down, and Rayner was Johnny on the spot to haul it in. Now Wells, quarterback draw off the pump fake. Gets a good block into the clear. Down to the 32-yard line. It is a first down on a gain of 13 yards. Here we take a better look at the bubble. As you see, Nix is really in the open field, and he gets hit down low, but as his body is twisting, not holding that ball tightly enough, and he just swings it loose, and Rayner in the right place at the right time and gets a perfect bounce. So first down now as Welsh with some scrambles, and uh, Joel Thomas with one run on the previous drive, and maybe gotten some uh, running game kindled here for Idaho as they try for the tying score. Preston Monaco in motion. Joel Thomas, and they got it set up pretty well. Gain of about nine yards inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. Nice job of getting the offensive lineman out in front. Here you'll see Thomas on the run. Look at the offensive lineman pull. He's got his center, Jeremy Wallace, right in front of him, and a great block right there. And then watch how Th Thomas, at only 5'6", hides behind him. And if you're Jose Gonzalez at free safety, that's like a train coming right over you. So you what, you had Wallace and Fuertes out in front of that play, like the old Green Bay sweep. First down, make it second down and one now. Football near the 23, a little misdirection here. Joel Thomas to the first down. It appears he's picked it up near the 21-yard line. Wayne, what I really like with this Idaho, Idaho offense, the last two drives, is they're mixing in some different things. They're running a little option here. They're running the quarterback draw. No better way to slow down a pass rush than to run a draw or a screen. And they don't have it with a two-back offense, so they're letting their quarterback do that. They're vacating the backfield. It's worked very well for Welsh. Here, just a little option. Didn't pick up a lot of yards, but it's going to slow those defensive ends down. Close enough for a measurement, as we see. And, Randy, I wonder how much of this offense that we're seeing how many of these different formations we're seeing from Idaho are things that they put in during this bowl preparation period of four weeks or so those are things that they want to try and do to confuse the defense sometimes they've worked sometimes they haven't they're on a roll right here coming up at the half Chris Lee and Kirk from Tempe Arizona and University of Washington head coach Jim Lambright was fired today also, some news on Bledsoe and the New England quarterback situation heading into the wild card weekend. All coming up halftime from Tempe, Arizona. First down. Welsh. that Idaho scored on er earlier, only a different formation. When something works for you, you try and come back, but you change your personnel so the defense doesn't recognize it. Three receivers to the top of the screen, tight end down to the bottom, but the same pass pattern, same result. Or you can just look at John Welsh there and see the confidence that he's gained these last two drives. Ben Davis to tie the game. One thing with John Welsh, he doesn't need any help with his confidence. Well, they've been going to the tight end. Stonebaugh had an opportunity earlier in this game. This time, Rover gets an opportunity and cashes in. Off the back foot, Welsh puts it up into the air and lets the big tight end go up for it and haul it in. Nice job of concentrating on the ball, letting the defensive back go right by you, keeping your eyes on the ball, and hauls in his second touchdown reception of the year. 
makes the second touchdown reception, hauls in the second pass. Jim Barber is on the sidelines. Jimmy? Wayne, it's interesting, as you guys remarked, about the push of the offensive line. That was the point of emphasis, even when Idaho was down by 14 points and after they had immediately scored a touchdown. They weren't happy with their protection of the quarterback, John Welsh. They worked on that while the defense was on the football field. That got better. And then suddenly, with him buying some more time, he's been able to find his receivers who score. So credit the offensive line and what the coaches drew up just prior to the last touchdown. You have to get creative at this time of year. No doubt about that, especially when you feel like you're undermanned a bit. Davis puts it away. A trio back deep. Good leverage into this kick and depth. Eddie Shaw will not return it. Southern Miss will take over at its 20-yard line. The Vandal fans with a lot to cheer about as they have charged back from a 21-7 deficit into a 21-all time. It didn't take long following the Southern Miss turnover. Four plays, 45 yards, 64 seconds. Well, it's one thing to create the turnover, but it doesn't mean much unless you do something with it. And that time the offense finished with a nice touchdown. Perfect play. Now we'll see if the defense continues with that momentum. Southern Miss, they need to get back into what has worked for them, which is running the ball with Derek Nix and mixing in Todd Pinkston in the White House. Just over four minutes to go in the first half. Nix made the first man miss, but not the second. Nofo Enga made early penetration. Kevin Hill put him away. Boy, Nofo Inga plays much bigger than 5'10", 210 pounds. And though he won't get credit for that tackle, he definitely disrupted the play and gave Hill a chance to come up and make the hit in the backfield. What a nice job. Both he gets the big back fighting off the block gets back there, it disrupts it, and then you see Hill with a wonderful arm tackle wrapping up Mixer on the leg. Loss of two, second and 12. Roberts may be changing the play at the line. And it opens up over the middle. Derek Nix to the 25 on a gain of about seven. Nice call that time by Roberts. I think it was an audible, but there were no down linemen. So sometimes when you don't know who's down and who's not, you don't know who to block. When you run a draw, you just let your lineman your fire out. Nix up to 69 yards, 17 carries. Southern miss, just two of seven on third downs. Third and five. That wasn't soft coverage, that was non-existent coverage. Those two guys defending weren't even in the picture. Tackle made by Brad Rice, a nickel back. Dennis Gibbs was also there. Boy, nice job of picking up the block by the back here. Here you'll see next, the blitz is gonna come from there, and he picks it up very well, and it lets Roberts get rid of the ball right over Nofuinga. So you've got soft coverage, as you said, but great job of blocking. And that's one of the things Derek Nix does. He's very mature in the passing game for a true freshman. Well, he cartwheeled that linebacker, didn't he? He was coming full speed. Quick toss. Surratt Gideon. A couple of quick moves. Gets him about eight yards after the 48-yard line. And it'll be second down and short coming up now. Southern Miss, you get the feels just now starting to get back into an offensive rhythm. Well, they get that first down, and that gives them a chance to continue to work their offense now that they get a little more room to work with. There you see Gideon lose his balance a little bit, but has enough room to regain that right before the ball gets there. This field is pretty slick, isn't it, today? We've seen several of the players slip. Second and eight. Several times when they wear the tape around the ankles, it goes on the bottom of the shoe, and that's what slips. Make it second and two. Roberts. Got a first down. And they're going to mark it at the 47 yard line. These were the go-to guys coming into this game. Idaho knew that, and Southern Miss has continued to make big plays with their wide receivers. Only the one touchdown, but the long pass to Pinkston that got them down to the five-yard line, and then Pinkston also dropped what could have been another touchdown. Each one of those receivers makes the other one better. 
First and ten. Again, Roberts setting up the play at the line. Gideon forced out of bounds. Ryan Skinner responding from the linebacking core. A gain of eight more yards down to the 39-yard line. One of the things Lee Roberts has shown me so far, Wayne, is his ability not to force things. Here you see the blitz coming. If it's not open deep, take the short thing. You've got a minute 30 left in the half, trying to get in field goal range first. Excellent route by Gideon, and Roberts throws the ball quickly, gets it to him before the defense gets there. Roberts has really shown he's got a good command for this offense and what his coach wants him to do. Roberts now over 200 yards passing, second and short. Nice catch on the far sidelines. Got a first down, Eddie Shaw with the reception. Shaw is the one senior in the regular quartet of receivers on the field for Southern Miss. Eddie Shaw and Raymond Wall kind of alternate at that third wide receiver. They've got a fair amount of catches, but that position steps up when teams try and take away getting in Pinkston because you focus so much on those guys. Shaw can hurt you also. Coming up on... A minute to go in this first half. First and ten from the 28-yard line. Southern Miss now in Vandal territory. Motion to the big tight end, Dan Clark. Penalty markers on the field. And now a white flag. It's some extracurricular pushing and shoving going on. I saw Alexikos get shoved to the ground. And The second penalty clearly should be an unsportsmanlike against Southern Miss, and the first one may also be against them for an illegal procedure or illegal, uh, or illegal formation. Jeff Bauer looking on, dismayed. Shedrick Blackman was at the middle of the scuffle as well. Illegal procedure, the initial call that we get on Southern Miss, and then the personal foul on Southern Miss. So they'll throw the book at it. As well they should. One is a dead ball foul, so they should be able to take all this. You will see the right guard see if he moves before the ball is snapped. You've got one man in motion, so you can't have the other one. There you see him just rock back a little bit. And we see just the end of the scuffle, and as you said, Alexikos comes up on the short end of that one physically, but 20 yards for his defense. Nick Devine has had trouble with this microphone all day, but there is the call against the offense and then the personal foul assessed as well. So this backs him up now. Back to the 47-yard line of Idaho. Instead of inside the 30, Southern Miss were the first and long. Well, you see Jeff Bauer there doesn't understand when a defense hasn't stopped you, you're moving the ball. Why do things to stop yourself? To 130. Game clock should read 130 oh. So as they set the clock. Jeff Bowers' team penalized 20 yards on that play. Now it's first and 30. Southern Miss, five penalties already against the Golden Eagles. Winding down the first half in Boise. Tied at 21. Lee Roberts, first and long. Derek Nix hit in the backfield. And Big Will Beck would not let go. The true freshman... From Verndale, Washington. What a great play by Beck to get the penetration, get into the backfield, and hit Nix right as he gets the ball. Loss of one, second and 31. Robert screens it out. Derek Nix. Nice tackle made by Bryson Gardner. Nix down at the 42-yard line. Gain of about eight yards. 52 seconds left to go in this first half. Southern Miss was in command not long ago, but Lee Roberts and company are in a dogfight now.
that's just above the 45th parallel. But its reach circles the globe. A place of time-honored traditions. A place that embraces the change that moves our world. Yet its influence touches us in ways sometimes even beyond our recognition. A place to learn. A place to grow. A place to honor. Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, Jim Barber back in Boise at the second annual Humanitarian Bowl. Southern Miss and Idaho tied at 21. And Southern Miss facing a third and long coming up. Southern Miss has slipped to three for seven on third down conversions. And this will be a tough one. Third and 25. Four receivers set. Roberts. Hit from behind. Fumble the football. And Will Fox got it. The Vandals get it at the Idaho 42. Maltosi chopped it loose from behind. Jeff Mills told us that he needs his inside guys to play well the entire game. They're very short on depth there. And there, as you called it away, Maltosi knocks it, chops it from behind, and the ball comes loose, and Will Beck, a good lesson here, never give up on the play. Will Beck comes from the defensive line way on the other side, never gives up on Chasen Roberts, and he's by the ball and can recover it. Well, it's even now turnovers. All of those turnovers are fumbles here today. You, you look at that, and it's no wonder it's even on the scoreboard. Yes, indeed. So we've got 43 seconds left in this first half. Idaho takes over. Football's at the 42. Welsh finds a man over the middle. Roberg, the tight end of the 45-yard line on a gain of 14 yards. Boy, the tight ends are playing a bigger role here, Randy, than we expected. Well, the defensive backs and the coverage are dictating take away the wideouts, and Idaho has had some tight ends emerge here, and they have created some big plays. Welsh, a nice catch. Good throw. Chris Lacey. Quickly inside the 30 are the Vandals at the 29 on a 16-yard gain. Maybe the best throw of the day by Wells. They go without a huddle. Under 30 seconds left in the half. Wells knocked away that time. Nice play made by Leo Barnes. And the pass to Jennifer Willie Alderson. Well, not the end of the world, that pass is incomplete. It will give Idaho a chance to kind of regroup, make sure they get their communication of what they want to do. You're close to field goal range if you aren't in it already, and you don't want to make some mistake. You want to make sure everybody's on the same page. So even though it's going to be second down after the incompletion, with only 21 seconds left, not, not that bad a situation. Roberts over 200 yards passing for Southern Miss. Welsh approaching that number for Idaho in this first half. Second and ten. Alderson and Booty shift in motion. Welch takes it himself. Penalty marker is down. I believe you're going to have some kind of a formation call against Idaho. Gain of four yards on that play as Welch escaped out of bounds at the 25. Well, you can't have two men in motion at the same time. And as Idaho did that, one of them stopped and the other one kept going. So this is going to be a five-yard penalty against Idaho. We just talked about the fact, make sure everybody knows what's going on and no miscommunication. You know, I was just saying to myself, Randy, I haven't seen this formation from Idaho. Well, we're, 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 we're not in Canada, so you yes. can't move more than one at a time. Well, we're not far from we're Canada. We're not far, <laughs> but we're not there. <laughs> yeah, the officials will set things up. Chris Tormey, who spent 11 years in Washington as an assistant. What a great guy to talk to, too. He's done a wonderful job with this program. Both staffs are wonderful. Illegal motion to call. And we just talked about, as you said, both staffs were wonderful, excited to be here. They've been treated just wonderfully by the people of Boise this week, and it's been a lot of fun for them. It has for us. So second down now. Second and 15. 16 seconds left to be played in the first half. Alderson in motion. He's a man to watch. Welsh will look for. Him. Sets up a screen this time. 
Thomas. Joel Thomas gets out of bounds at the 21 yard line. Gain of 13. Well, you just can't count on Thomas being down until you see him on the ground. He makes more, he breaks more tackles. Here you see the screen set up, it's coming right at you. Looks like he's gonna be tackled, but just keeps going and gets pushed into Prestamonico, picks up another four or five yards. Yes. Any way you can. Third down now coming up, about two yards to go. Football to the 21-yard line. And let's see what they try here. Eight seconds remaining. Idaho for three on third downs. Welsh looks it over from the shotgun. Overson inside the five of the two-yard line. Two seconds remain. Timeout, Idaho. The last several times Idaho has been down here, they've thrown the corner route to the outside. This time, they line up in the same formation. They don't go to the outside, though. They hit the receiver over the middle. And again, I mentioned him a moment ago, Willie Alderson, the quick one from Nampa, Idaho. Alderson right there. He's going to come down and run the in route. Southern Miss, a little leery with the outside success that they've had. Nobody in the passing lane there, no linebackers. A great catch by Alderson. He's a little bigger, six foot, 195. He's the guy they like to run over the middle. Does a nice job of catching ball in traffic. Best hands on the team, excellent athlete. Willie Alderson on the reception to the doorstep of the Golden Eagles. Well, coming up, this is Wild Card Weekend of the NFL. And on Saturday and Sunday, NFL countdown, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 8.30 a.m. Pacific. And the guys will get you all up to date on what's coming up on the Wild Card Weekend. And if you missed anything during the day, check out NFL Primetime, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Saturday and Sunday, Wild Card Weekend in the NFL on ESPN. I think Chris Tormey is thinking about going for the touchdown rather than the field goal here. Well, I'll tell you what, you're only two yards away. If his team, though, I think he's got to kick the field goal here. If his team can go in with the lead with the way they played in that first quarter, that would be an outstanding accomplishment. Here you see they almost caught up with the passing yard. It should be no surprise we see 467 yards of passing offense in the first half. After all, we are in big sky country, and the air is a little thinner up here, isn't it? Well, your defensive coordinators can't say they caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, if you're thinking about going for it, there's the size of the two lines as they stack up. Well, what we said earlier, it's not as much of a size difference, but a strength difference. Southern Mississippi, a much more established program, is much stronger. And they're going for the touchdown. First and goal for the two, eight seconds to go. Play action, Wentz got a man, touchdown! Michael Moody, the running back. They're going to have a touchdown lead. It's 27 to 21. You shouldn't be surprised by anything Chris Tormey does as an offensive coach in calling different plays, strange formations. You saw them huddle up on the sideline. They disguised the personnel. They ran out, went on a quick step, on a quick snap, and it worked perfectly before Southern Miss was ready. To make it a seven-point lead. Well, a moment ago, we were thinking, kick the field goal, take a three-point lead in the halftime. Boy, would that give you some momentum. But the gunslinger, John Walsh, 59 yards and six plays. And on first and goal with eight seconds to go in the half, he finds Michael Moody, a junior from Long Beach, California, Cerritos Junior College transfer in the end zone. And it's a seven-point lead. Chris Torrey, his team has come all the way back from 14 down to seven ahead. We're going to take a break right now. More ESPN news coming right back. We're at halftime of the Humanitarian Bowl on ESPN2. The snow camp 
Boise foothills, where desert meets mountain here at Boise, Idaho, the state capital of the state of Idaho. Second annual humanitarian bowl, and what a wild first half we had. A first half of ebbs and flow, and my partner Randy Wright asked me, well, who's ebb and who's flow? Well, ebb would be Southern Miss in the first quarter, and flow would be Idaho in the second. I thought they were doing the game or something. I'm glad you clarified that. Southern Miss had a lot of success early, throwing the ball deep, mostly to Todd Pinkston. Idaho did a nice job of adjusting and took that away. And Idaho's success in the second quarter came, of course, John Welsh got hot, but they also got Joel Thomas involved in the running game. Let's take a look at the highlights of the first half, or a few of the highlights, what we have time for at any rate. It was Southern Miss that got on the board first. In close two yards, this is a quick slant. Sherrod Gideon for a 7-0 lead. Gideon five catches, 49 yards in that touchdown reception. 7-0. That was set up on a fumble by Jerome Thomas. But watch redemption for Thomas here as he follows the scene, cuts it back, gets a good block from Skinner, the linebacker, and goes all the way. 98 yards to the house and a 7-7 ball game. And then this in the second quarter. Welsh with eight seconds to go in the quarter. On first and goal for the two. Finds Michael Moody on a two-yard touchdown pass to Camp. The first half, a wild first half, but don't go away. The kickoff for the second half is coming up from Boise after these messages. Welcome back to ESPN's exclusive presentation of Bowl Week. The Idaho Vandals trying to shock the ball world, leading Southern Miss at the break, 28-21. What's the uh, biggest turning run again in this game? Coach, you were down at one point, 21-7. Well, our guys just never quit. And, uh, that's the thing, and that's one of our themes is finish, and we need to finish in this second half and finish in the fourth quarter. John Walsh has been moving the ball well. Do you continue to attack Southern Miss? Well, I think we need to continue to throw the football, but we're trying to find a way to run it right now. We're, you know, we can't throw it every down. We need to keep them off balance with the run a little bit better than we did in the first half. We'll let you go. I know you got business to attend to. Yeah, we do. We're going to go try to win a football game. Thanks very much, and go Vandals. <laughs> Chris Tormey, our special guest here, Wayne and Randy. Chris leading a cheer there as his team trots back onto the field. The numbers at halftime reflect the closeness of the ball game. And I'll tell you something, if you take a look at these, the rushing yardage, it was uh, the Vandals got that, those 39 yards late. They came in the second quarter. Passing yardage pretty close right there. The average on first down to the Vandals, whopping 9.1 yards per uh, attempt on first down. Much of that buoyed by the, the offensive run they made in the second quarter. In, in the, the last half of that second quarter, when they got Joel Thomas involved, John Welsh had some success running some of the draws, the quarterback draws. It worked very well. It opened everything up for them. So Chris Tormey will hope that his team can continue the momentum. A near disastrous first 20 minutes for Idaho. They fell behind 21 to 7 because of those factors. But in the last 10 minutes, they capitalized. And three touchdowns on the board later, they got the 28-21 lead. And Welsh really came out of that second quarter. He got hot. When you get hot, you, there's no telling what a confident quarterback can do with all the talented wide receivers. And if you're Jeff Bauer, you're telling your team, hey, they really haven't stopped us yet. We've got three touchdowns. We've had two fumbles. We're moving the ball. Let's just not turn it over and beat ourselves. Let's continue to finish these drives. Their defense really hasn't stopped us. Southern Miss will receive the football on the opening kickoff of the second half. You know, it, the Idaho Vandals, this has been an incredible run. We mentioned the fact that the Sporting News ranked them 112 out of 112 Division I football playing schools at the outset of the season. But if you consider this, it was just three years ago. They were in the Division I AA uh, playoffs. And this program hasn't been on this level very long, so it's been a truly remarkable rise for Chris Tormey and company. What a great job he's done. The first thing you have to do is to sell your players, make them believe in what you're doing. He has done that. He's got the, the attitude where he wants it. The only thing he needs is more time to build some strength. You can recruit speed. You can recruit running backs that can play, that have speed, but you can't recruit strength because it takes... Uh, a young man till he's 20, 21 to, to let his body develop. So that's the biggest difference. And that's where they're maybe a, a little on the short end in this game today. Ben Davis kicks it away to start the second half for the Idaho Vandals. And here's 
his kickoff. Eddie Shaw tracking it toward the near side of the two. He faked a pass. Did you see that? Eddie Shaw picking his way to the 30-yard line and escorted to the chalk marks in rather rude fashion. Jason Daniels made the stop. And Lee Roberts, uh, look at his first half, Randy. Corey, much like we thought, he's not real flashy. He has thrown the ball very well and very few mistakes. Can't think of anything that really jumps out. Neither side, for all the passing we've seen in this game, has thrown an interception yet. The four turnovers in the game have all been fumbles. And we've seen such soft coverage in the secondary. There really haven't been many opportunities for interceptions. Soft coverage on this play here. Slot to the bottom of your screen. First down from the 30-yard line. And this is Nix, the freshman running back. Skinner and Hill collaborate on the stop. Gain of four to the 34. Boy, Ryan Skinner plays the game like few linebackers. He just plays with a, a reckless, abandoned, uh, suicidal attitude out there. In fact, three of the first four games, he had a personal foul and Chris Tormey told him, hey, if you get any more personal <laughs> fouls, I'm going to cut a finger off for every one. Uh, I haven't checked his gloves yet, yeah. but uh, I don't think he's had any personal fouls since Jim yet. Barber's going to check his uh, gloves the next time he comes off the field. Make sure there are ten fingers there. Second down and six. And once again, Derek Nix getting the call here, a true freshman. Out of Atala, Alabama, Will Beck made the stop along with Ryan Skinner. Jim Barber's down there in the sidelines. And Jim, what did Jeff Bauer have to say at halftime? He seemed to be pretty calm about the situation, even as he approached me, Wayne, before the second half began. His feeling was generally that we still have a lot of football to play and we can move the football. We need to get a handle on John Welsh's passing. The substitution patterns have been able to figure out, but they're not able to get in touch with the receivers of Idaho, and that's made a big problem for Southern Mississippi. Third and two for Southern Miss at the Golden Eagle 38. Knicks got it. Good move off the right side of the line. Followed big Shedrick Blackman, all 6'6 and 325 pounds of him off the right side of the line. But that play looked as though it were going to open up even more than it did, and Nix was going to be able to pick up five or six yards. Idaho doing a nice job of converging on that quickly and limiting it to what will be a first down, but not by much. Nix up to 77 yards, couple of touchdowns today. In the 21 rushing attempts, most of them in the first half, he, we were told he gets better as the day goes on, but I don't know if they can count on that if they have to give him the ball 38, 40, 42 times. First down. Gideon. Roped in before he's able to get a first down across the 45-yard line. Quick coverage in the secondary. Tom Rayner, who recovered a fumble earlier today. Also over there was the uh, the safety man, Bryson Gardner. See, Rayner just not wanting to give up the big play. You give a lot of coverage, but then you're a lot of cushion, but then you come up and you make sure of the tackle. You don't want to let these fast receivers break that first tackle and turn into a big play. Pinkston hurt this ball club early in the ball game, and they may have switched Dennis Gibbs at times over to Pinkston in the second quarter, now in the third. Second down. The ball tipped into the air and then knocked down by Leah Roberts. Roberts trying to hit a slant to the right side, and no Moinga, I believe the man who got a piece of it. That was the matchup that Jeff Mills and Idaho wanted, Wayne. They wanted Dennis Gibbs, their best corner, on Pinkston to try it in. They actually wanted him on Gideon first, but with Pinkston's success, they wanted to bring him over there, and they have since gone to Tom Rayner as the backup, and Ige Ivero has not seen a lot of action. Third and three for Southern Miss. Out of the shotgun. Four receivers set. Roberts has the first down and a whole lot more. Lee Roberts out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Brad Rice forced him out, 22-yard gain. What a nice job by Roberts to see the open in the middle. You'll take a look at 44 Skinner there. Watch the move. Roberts just goes right by him. There he is right there. Watch Roberts go right by him. He comes up and 
I don't know if he thought he wasn't that fast or what, but he just flew right by him, made a nice run and a nice game. When Southern Miss really needed to keep control of that ball and pick up that first down. Opening drive, second half, first down at the Idaho 30 for Southern Miss. Roberts wanted to go left with it. Is it a catch? Yes, it is, and a beautiful one by Gideon. A gain of nine, just short of the first down. Well, these Southern Miss receivers really have a presence of where they are on the field. They know when they're inbounds, right where that sideline is. Nice throw, but watch how Gideon keeps those feet inbounds, catches the ball, and then falls. That's a Chris Carter catch. You see him do that for the Vikings all the time. These are two polished receivers, Gideon and Pinkston, and they're both coming back next year. Second and one. Nix pounds away. To the 18-yard line on a gain of three, and it's a first down for Southern Miss as they begin, Randy, to pound it out here against this Idaho defense, and that's part of the game plan. You know, it's funny, Larry Keck, the offensive coordinator, was saying we like to loosen things up with the pass early in the ball game, but in the third quarter, you like to hunker down and slam the door with the running game. They felt that midway through the third quarter, their offensive line has got to take over and start to control the game. They want to throw it early, and they don't want to stop throwing it, but that's where they feel they have an advantage. Dantzler in motion. Good block by Nix. Fumble by Roberts. Recovered by Will Beck. The recovery, I believe it was Chris Nopoenga who knocked the ball loose. Nopoenga is blocked and blocked pretty well, gets up off the ground, comes back and forces the fumble, and Will Beck again continuing with his pursuit. Here, watch Derek Nick. There's the block. Nopoenga goes down, comes back, knocks the ball loose. What an effort. Will Beck, always around the ball, recovers his second fumble today. What an effort by Nopoenga. First down off the third fumble recovery of the day by the Vandals. First down for the Idaho offense. 38-yard line, Idaho territory. Now, what do we have? Penalty markers are down. Delay a game, I believe. I believe that's what the call is going to be. Jeff Bauer, again, you just saw him there on the sideline wondering what he has to do to his offense to convince them if we don't beat ourselves, we're moving the ball. There, they had a wonderful field position before that one. Meanwhile, Idaho knew that they had to win this category, turnovers, to have a chance in today's game. Well, they're winning the turnover category now, and they lead by seven. Slot at the bottom of your screen. Alderson in motion. Welsh under immediate pressure from Scott. Coming back for it, making the catch. On the play was uh, Ethan Jones, but a loss of yardage back to the 28. They lost about five. I think they were trying to set up that wide receiver screen, but there was no protection, no blocking at all. You at least have to slow them down. And Welsh did a nice job of just getting rid of that ball. And Jones in the backfield, when he caught it, would have been better off to just drop that ball, let it hit the ground. Cedric Scott with the pass rush pressure right up the gut. Now it is second down. Good time to go on a long count when you get that aggressive pass rush, maybe pull him off sides. Joel Thomas. Oh, <laughs> boy. When he found that sliver of an opening, he hit it hard. Out to about the 38-yard line, maybe the 39, and it's going to be third and 10 coming up. Boy, there's a guy that is only 5'6", 216 pounds, runs with a lot of authority. He's so hard to tackle. His, his center of gravity is so low, and he's so strong. He just delivers this blow and runs right over Gonzalez. Of course, the bench press is 485 pounds, more than any offensive lineman on their team. They don't even have a lineman that benches 400 pounds. Which is truly really remarkable when you think about Division I football. Joel Thomas, sixth year senior. Go, Bandit! Sophomore season, he suffered a uh, broken foot and a knee injury later on in his career. Adelius Thomas shaken up here. Well, I'll tell you what, he is a huge member of that defensive front for Southern Miss. 
One for four on third downs are the Vandals today. Facing third, a little bit less than 10 yards to go. Welsh. Incomplete is what they rule on the far side. A diving attempt made by Ethan Jones. He's unable to come up with it. Inbounds. And it's fourth down, so the Southern Miss defense has held. Welsh looked like he wasn't really comfortable when he threw that ball. He looked as though he had more time than what he thought he did. Rushed it when he didn't have to. And threw in an accurate pass. The All-America, Adelius Thomas, on the bench, getting looked at. Jim Barber will be by with a report on that injury momentarily. Mike O'Neill in punt formation. Good leverage into this kick. Forcing a fair catch signal by Eddie Shaw, and he reins it in near the 23-yard line. So we are early going in this third quarter. Southern Miss trailing Idaho by seven. Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, and Jim Barber. Adelius Thomas went out a few moments ago for Southern Miss. They're All-America defensive end outside linebacker. We'll get a report in a moment, and he's back up walking around. It looked like he got that ankle retaped. Thomas blocked a field goal earlier today. 12 and a half sacks, 20 tackles behind the line of scrimmage this season. Even if he comes back, if that ankle is bothering him, it's going to hurt the speed and take away from that speed. Big advantage right on. Southern Miss in the gold shirts, black pants. Derek Nix, true freshman running back, motors his way across the 25 to the 28, gain of five. And Jim Barber, what can you tell us on the injured defensive end for Southern Miss? Well, Wayne, for Southern Miss fans, the good news is Adelius Thomas will return. He's got some swelling above the patella, and what they've done is given him some more padding so he can be a little more comfortable. He didn't want to come off the playing field initially, but one of the officials called time, and he did get attended to, and we do expect him to get back in there. Well, that's good news. Second down coming up here, about five yards to go. You know, there was some jumping in the middle of the line there by Idaho. I don't know if they were drawn off sides, but looks like J.J. Johnston a little anxious there. Nick Define has had a heck of a time with that microphone down there in the field. See him right up the middle there watching the ball, and, and <laughs> Roberts doing a nice job drawing him off as several of the Vandals jumped him. Yep. Offsides against the Vandals. First down now as a result of the penalty See, for Southern Miss. He will take that frustration out on Southern Miss on, on this play. Roberts under pressure. Boy, almost... A great example of prestidigitation, but he could not get away. Jasic and Alexikos rained on the quarterback back inside the 30-yard line. And it's a loss. Back to the 26 of about eight yards. Pretty nice job of coming from all different angles right into Roberts. There you see Alexikos comes in there, though he misses him. See Skinner there. And then, of course, Jacek is back in. You just can't get away from all of them. And all of those are linebackers. Idaho bringing all three of their linebackers along with their four defensive linemen. Second in about 18, almost 18 yards to go. Roberts on his own now. Nice job to escape out of bounds. They're going to mark it to the 31-yard line. Look to be a pickup of about five. Boy, very aggressive defensive game plan here as this third quarter has gotten underway. Idaho coming after Roberts, not letting him get into that rhythm that he was in early when he hurt them so much with the deep passes. Third down coming up for Southern Miss. And they have struggled on third downs, mostly because they've been in third and long situations this season, uh, this game. Five of ten overall, but at one point they were just three of seven. Third down, and about 12. Roberts, quick release. Kingston not going out. Oh, he stays in play. Gets up the football. Idaho recovers. Gibbs gathered it in. Todd 
Pinkston trying to break free, and for Jeff Bauer and company, it's their fourth lost fumble of the day. Another unforced error here is, is the Pinkston just drops the ball, trying to fight for some extra yardage. And there you see Gardner doing a nice job of at least making the first hit, but an unforced fumble caused there as Pinkston just drops the ball. You, when you almost get the feeling that Southern Miss had it easy in the first quarter, thought this was going to be an easy victory, and mentally has taken a couple steps backwards in their concentration. Golden opportunity for the Vandals starting in enemy territory. Welsh on the run lets it go, and it's incomplete. Townsley was in the vicinity. T.J. Slaughter rushing the quarterback. Take a look at the fumble again. He slips loose here from Bryson Gardner. He's got the ball. Now as he starts, it just pops out. Looks like he lost control of it momentarily, was trying to tuck it away again. Then he picked his eyes up, started looking at the oncoming tacklers and lost control of it. Second and 10 coming up now for the Vandal offense. Jeff Bauer's got the headset off. He's got to see this firsthand. Joel Thomas, the lone setback. He goes in motion. They vacate the backfield. Welsh, a short drop. And he has nowhere to go. Loses a couple of yards on the play. ESPN Radio will present the final four days of the 1998 college football season with coverage of three of the Bowl Championship Series games. The Rose Bowl presented by AT&T Friday, 4.30 Eastern, 1.30 Central to our Pacific time. UCLA, Wisconsin. The FedEx Orange Bowl on Saturday night, and that'll be Syracuse in Florida, 7.30 Eastern time. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl on Monday, January 4th. The National Championship game, 7.45 p.m. Eastern, 3.45 p.m. Pacific time, Tennessee and Florida State. Third down and 12, Welsh. Ethan Jones could not hang on. He would not have had a first down, and it's fourth down. Wouldn't have been a first down, but it would have given them much better field position and a better opportunity had they chosen to kick the field goal. He certainly gives every effort he has stretching out for this ball, but just too far out in front of him. Mm. Can't hold it. Great effort, though. This will be a 52-yard field goal attempt. Ben Davis had a 52-yarder blocked earlier today. His long is 55, second longest in school history this year against North Texas. And it's blocked again in the middle of the line. De Quincey Scott appeared to be the man who blocked it. And for the second time today, an Idaho field goal attempt is blocked. Southern Miss thwarts the Vandal opportunity. And Adelius Thomas returns. Yes, albeit limping, but he comes up with a football. A whole new era in college football begins. The Bowl Championship Series. Coming January 1st, only on ABC. Ben Davis had a field goal blocked a moment ago, his second of the day. Southern Miss takes over. Football at their own 42-yard line. Lee Roberts again motions the play at the line. The short drop, the slant, Gideon, and he dropped it. Well, we mentioned that Ben Davis had a field goal blocked just a moment ago, but there was a reason for this, Randy. Well, you take a look at his plant, but his left foot here is going to slip right out, and he kicks the ball very low. So, as you said, clearly a, a reason that explains this one. Well, the way that ball bounced, too, straight back, fortunate for Idaho that somebody in Southern Miss didn't pick it up and, and just continue running with it. Well, the Idaho kicking game has been shaky at times this season, and we've seen evidence of it here today. Well, you hate not having the points, but you also give Southern Miss excellent field position. From the 42, second and 10. Gully, the receiver in motion. Right through the hands of the intended receiver, Gully. Not expected to play a whole lot. Josh Gully, a quarterback wide receiver out of Grand Prairie, Tennessee, caught a pass earlier today. That one he should have had in two plays now. We've seen Gideon drop a pass, and now Gully drop a pass. Roberts is still throwing the ball right where he needs to. His receivers, though, not concentrating and dropping the ball. We've seen signs of that with the fumbles, the drop passes, some of the penalties. 
Southern Miss doesn't have their concentration where they need to. Third and 10. Roberts, 19 of 31. 242 yards passing. Pass short of the mark, intended for Eddie Shaw. Pass rush pressure on. Jasic, the linebacker, was all over the quarterback. There is a flag down. I would think it's going to be for holding, though. Yep, holding against Southern Miss. They may decline this. It would bring up a fourth down, and they should decline this and get the ball in relatively good field position. It's one of the things that Jeff Mills told us he needed his team to do. They need to force Southern Miss into three plays and out. They can't let them continue to control the ball. Jamie Purser will come on in punt formation. Vern Bernard, back deep, ranks 20th in the nation in punt returns. Bernard makes the catch on it at the 18. Chased by Jamie Purser out of bounds. 32 yard line of Southern Miss. 40 yard punt, 50 yard return. Bernard broke one 91 yards for a touchdown to set a school record against Utah earlier. This one, 50 yards on the return, gives his team another opportunity here. Back in Boise, Ethan Jones caught that ball out of bounds. And so it'll be a third down coming up for Idaho. John uh, Welsh running a little option on the previous play and picked up about five yards. Well, how quickly things can change, Wayne. It looked like Southern Miss was going to have excellent field position, and they did after the blocked field goal. And now with the punt return, Idaho's the one with excellent field position. Three receivers out, three come in. As they break the huddle, and now for the line of scrimmage, third down. A little bit less than six yards to go. Four receivers are wide to the right side of the formation. Welsh goes the other way, and it's broken up nicely. Excellent play made by the quarterback, Terrence Parrish, to knock it away from the intended receiver, Ryan Prestamonico. I think we're going to see Chris Tormey go for it here on fourth down rather than send this field goal unit out there with the problems they've had with trying the two long attempts already. You're exactly right. I think it's fourth down. About six yards to go, a little bit less than six. 6.02 to go, third quarter. 28-21 was our score at halftime. Alderson in motion. Screens it out. Thomas, first down. Thomas roped down by Brian Bell near the 16-yard line, 13-yard game. Great job by Thomas. You know, when you're trying to tackle a guy that's six, that's five foot six, it's just kind of hard to find him. And here, it looked like it was pretty well defensed. But then you come up there and it's like, where'd he go? <laughs> he just slips right through there. Great job of running. He's five six, but you won't find him riding at any racetrack in the near future. He's 210 pounds. <laughs> You gotta be around 100 pounds to be a jockey. First down from the 15. Quarterback draw. And this time, Welsh not gonna get too far. Got about a yard out of that. They've gone to that well a couple of times, Randy. And I think the uh, kids from Southern Miss being, able, being well done, starting to recognize it. The Quincy Scott, principal defender. You know, that's a good point, Wayne, in that sometimes that play may not work every time for big yardage, but if it slows the pass rush down, if it keeps the, the Quincy Scott, the Cedric Scott, and the Dalius Thomas from rushing full speed, then you've accomplished it because you've given Welsh more time to throw, and that's where he's really going to hurt you. Second down, about nine yards to go. <laughs> Welsh, and it's dropped by Ethan Jones. It's a tough throw for the quarterback, rolling out left, coming back over the middle. 
And then the receiver, he put it where it could be caught, and the receiver, Ethan Jones, could not hang on. Boy, he really does a nice job of getting his shoulders turned, and it's a tough throw, but he takes something off of it, knowing that Jones is going the other way. And boy, you just got to catch that ball. Go down to your knees, catch it in your gut. You've got the first down. Now you put your team in a third down and long, and then you just got to make that catch. Not good for the Vandals on third down. Welsh in this quarter, two of eight passing. Welsh brings it in. This time, Ethan Jones, the reception. First and goal at the three. What a move by Ethan Jones to get open right at the line of scrimmage. He just puts a nice move up top. Brutley goes to the outside. Even a pass thrown a little bit behind him, and Jones has got enough separation to come back and catch that ball. What a difference a play makes, right? Ethan Jones drops the pass over the middle on the previous play, comes up with a good grab here. It's first and goal for Idaho. Joel Thomas. Very close, but not in. It's going to be second up. The helmet and shoulder pads are in. The football oh, is not. <laughs> well, as you said, that was close. It looked as though Thomas was going to be able to get in there. Take a look here and see if the ball does actually hit the line or if he comes up short. Boy. He's in. The knee hit the ground first is what they ruled. Before the ball hit the goal line. Don't know if it could be any closer without being in. What do you think here? Quarterback sneak? I think they'll give it to Thomas again. You're right. Thomas tried to go airborne and was bit met at midair. He may have lost a few inches on that salvo. And that would bring up third down. But that's a long jump for Thomas to go airborne. Not much penetration that time. Excuse me, not much push coming off by that offensive line. A lot of bodies, a lot of banging. It's a man's game inside the one, isn't it? It sure <laughs> is. No place to hide. Tenth play the drive for Idaho. Joel Thomas again. And he's yanked back. Oh, they score a touchdown. Southern Miss thought they had him stopped. And the official on the far side watching the line. Gives him the touchdown. You know, I think they did have him stopped at the point of contact, but he just kept fighting it and got himself into the end zone on individual effort. Boy, and you're right. He's so small, I couldn't see that second effort that got him over the line. But he was kind of engulfed yeah. by the defense. Great heart, great runner, Joe Thomas, the all-time leading rusher in Idaho Vandals history. Ben Davis for the point after. It is good. Each team has had a 14-point lead in this game. 2.59 left to go, third quarter. It is the Vandals' turn to lead by two touchdowns, and Chris Tormey celebrates the score. Boise, a quiet western city. Jason Daniels in the latest scoring drive. This is the first of the second half. 
Only 32 yards set up by that outstanding return off of the punt, but yet again, their offense taking advantage, finishing, and putting the ball in the end zone. If you're Southern Miss, Wayne, I think you need to get back to what they did well in the first quarter. That is getting Pinkston and Gideon involved. They've got more big strike weapons. They just need to get their ball, the ball into the hands of those players. First down. Derek Nix. Mal Tosi pursuing from his defensive tackle spot made the stop gain of two. Well, if you're wondering, don't adjust your TV. That's a blue surface here, blue AstroTurf and Jim Barber. People have been slipping on that out there. Yes, Wayne, it is a very slippery blue surface. It's interesting. You talk to officials here, and they say, well, we're a bit surprised because we've covered this field most of the way prior to this game and thought everything would be okay. Perhaps it's the cold temperatures that are starting to make the difference. I know one thing. Southern Mississippi would like to change shoes, but hasn't been able to do so so far. Yeah, that blue surface is not water, and it's not freezing. And Canadian geese don't land on it on a regular basis. A lot of myths about that blue surface. Over the top and deep. And this one thrown by Lee Roberts off the mark, but a penalty marker down. The coverage provided by Tom Rayner on Todd Pinkston. So as you suggested, Randy, they are going to keep going to the big guys, and there's no reason why they shouldn't. Well, even if you don't get the completed pass, you do take a chance and maybe get a pass interference, which we should see right here. There it is, the pass interference call against Idaho. We are at the foothills of the beautiful Rocky Mountains. They call those the Boise foothills. This is the second annual humanitarian bowl at Bronco Stadium in Boise, Idaho, home of Boise State. And this is kind of an unusual week for Bronco supporters to see the hated Idaho Bandles in here as the home team. Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, Jim Barber, our entire ESPN2 crew. It is first down off the penalty now for Southern Miss in the football out of the 48-yard line. I meant Vandals figuratively rather than literally. <laughs> first down now for Southern Miss. Tight end Antonio Franklin in motion. Going deep once again. Got a man out there. The pass just overthrown and dead for Gideon. Had a step on the coverage of Tom Rayner down the sidelines again. And that cornerback, whether it be Ivero or Rayner, is where Southern Miss has attacked all day. And Gideon blew right by Rayner, was open. Roberts just didn't put enough air underneath the ball. Give him a chance to run under it. It didn't look like it, Randy. On first look, like they had safety help back there. Don't you think they would normally go with a cover two type of thing and, and back that coverage uh, with a little deep help? Well, you try and mix things up, and I think now if Southern Miss has gone deep twice already on this drive. They may put some of the safeties over top. Second down and 10 for Southern Miss from the 48. Roberts going short pattern. Gideon makes the, stop, the catch, and the... Force made by the linebacker Skinner chased him out of bounds with the 41-yard line of Idaho, and it's a gain of 11 to a first down. When you go with a, a two-deep safety over the top, this is one of the things you give up is this little zone right in here where you've got plenty of room there. So when you want to try and take away the deep threat, you have to have a linebacker come out and cover on a wide receiver. Instead of a quicker safety who's exactly. more adept at pass coverage, and yes. The safeties can't come up, so therefore you, it, it's a chess game, and that time they guessed right. Gideon, been a busy man today. Caught the first touchdown pass of the game. From the 41, second and first and 10. Roberts again going over the top for Pinkston, just off his fingertips. Boy, well, I'll tell you something. Tom Rayner is getting a workout down the sidelines, and that time they did have safety help coming from Bryson Gardner. Well, I think they've realized what they've done is they've started to roll the safety, let him help, but they're letting Gibbs go one-to-one. -one. Here you see a beautiful pass, and there's Gardner, number 10, the safety, going over top, but really pretty good coverage right there. Rayner stayed with him. Rayner's with him foot for foot, and step for step, but boy, if you're Pinkston, I thought at first maybe you got to lay out for that ball, but that really wasn't it. It wasn't one of those. It was just pretty good coverage. Second and ten. Robertson as he lets it go off the mark intended for Shaw. Pinkston was also in the vicinity. That pass was intended for Shaw in the short pattern over the middle. And good pass rush pressure that time by the Vandals up front. 
that one of the big adjustments that they have made defensively in this third quarter is they have become aggressive with their pass rush. They're not letting Roberts sit back there, and they're forcing him to throw like that off balance. This big Will Beck, the true freshman out of Bernadale, Washington. He's been all over the quarterback. He's been he's recovered two fumbles today. He hit the quarterback on that play. He was for a player of the year in Washington, but yet he's only 6'2", wasn't really heavily recruited. Third and 10. Roberts. And it's dropped on the play by Kevin Hurd. Roberts is frustrated. Hurd is frustrated, and Southern Miss is forced to punt. Well, you see Roberts there just shaking his head. He can't do any more than what he has done in this quarter with giving his receivers a chance to make the play. He's making the play by in time, throws a nice pass, and you just got to catch up. Randy, they've had three drops in this quarter alone by different receivers, and you just don't get that many opportunities because Idaho is doing something when they get the ball, so you've got to keep it and keep the drives going and pick up first downs on third down like that. Bryson Gardner is back deep to receive this kick from Jamie Purser. It's a high spiral. Hits on the three, stays in play, and is down near the two-yard line. Patrick McCrory, the deep snapper. And they're going to mark it inside the two. Don't forget, coming up, the Come Again Holiday Bowl, beginning with bowl game night. And that'll be this evening on ESPN, 16th ranked Nebraska against number six, Arizona. 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 4.30 Pacific Time from San Diego, California. What a job Dick Tomey has done out there with that Arizona team. 11-1, just one game away from making it to the Rose Bowl for the first time. A challenge for him to get his team ready to play against a good Nebraska team. Outstanding matchup on ESPN tonight, 7.30 Eastern. First down football marked at the one. Joel Thomas able to slither his way to the four on a gain of three yards. Over to make the uh, tackle on the play that time, Gerald Mumford. Here's a chance for this Southern Miss defense to start to create some things, make some things happen. They've got Idaho backed up. They know that there's still plenty of time left. We're just in the last minute of the third quarter. If they can hold them here and force them to punt, they stand to get very good field position. Second down. Joel Thomas trying to get to the outside as a convoy of blockers. And it's close to the first down. You know, it's the uh, the last burst at the end of his runs. Just as you start to look away, Joel Thomas wait, makes one last push, Randy. And oftentimes, that gets him a first down like it did here. And look at his center, number 52, Jeremy Wallace, pulled all the way out there. Kind of runs some interference that he takes one of the guys, and that allows Thomas a little extra room, as you said, to get that burst and always fall forward, pick up those extra two or three yards. Of course, if he stretches out, it's not quite two yards. But. <laughs> oh, I knew that was coming. Oh, my. First down at the 11. Motion from Robert to tight end. Thomas trying to cut it back on the slant. Out across the 15 to the 16-yard line. Gain of four yards there. And again, very conservative play calling this deep in their own territory. Well, what they're doing, though, is they're slowly getting into the type of field position where they can open things up. They, they've got a 14-point lead. I'm sure that Chris Tormey doesn't want to do anything foolish or let them get back into the game with the way that Idaho is dictating it right now. Time winding down to this third quarter. They'll walk to the other end of the blue surface here at Bronco Stadium in Boise. Fourth quarter is coming up. Chris Tormey and company on top. John Welsh, the gunslinger, has the lead. Southern Miss in Idaho. It has been a frustrating third quarter for Lee Roberts. Three drop passes. The quarterback can't do any more than put his team in a position, but they have been unable to capitalize. 
score by quarter. Southern Miss in the first uh, had the upper hand. Idaho the second, and in the third quarter, both teams had opportunities. Idaho able to punch across one of their field uh, position opportunities. And they've got the lead by 14 as we start the fourth quarter. And it looks like they drew up uh, DeQuincy Scott offside and may get a cheap five yards out of this. They discuss it, and Nick Define turns on the mic that won't work again, but does motion offsides against Southern Miss, and this will get uh, Idaho close to a first down, if not a first down. And they're going to call it a first down. So the first and ten from the 22. Idaho with the lead and the ball as we start the fourth quarter. Welsh on the rollout. And it's incomplete. Willie Alderson could not hang on. Watts tomahawked it from behind on the defense. Well, Jim Barber, it's getting a little chilly up here in the press box. What's it like down there in the field? Much chillier on the field. You guys have mentioned the drop pass is five for Southern Miss. That has something to do with the weather, guys. The temperature has dropped 15 degrees on this field because the sun has gone away. And watching the Southern Miss receivers and some of the folks on the bench, they're starting to put their hands in their pockets. I think the cold is bothering them, and that's why the drops are starting to pick up. Second down from the 22 for the Vandals. Take to Joel Thomas. Welsh on the roll. Incomplete. Lacey caught it, but apparently did not have position, according to the line judge on the near side. Boy, it was a, a, what looked like a beautiful catch. He kept his foot in. It looked like he had control of it, but as you said, the official was ruling that he did not have control, bobbled it, but all the same, a nice throw by Welsh. And again, Idaho moving the pocket. They've moved him to the left a couple times. That time, bring him to the right. They're keeping Southern Miss guessing as to where he's going to be so that they don't let him just tee off on him. It's worked very well. More often than not, they've rolled away from Adelius Thomas. And I can see why. Yeah. Penalty marker down here. Uh, inning substitution on the offense. That's a five-yard penalty. Third down. Well, I can tell you what Jeff Bauer's thinking on the near sidelines. He's saying, finally. It's about time. <laughs> finally. Chris Tormey and company on that Idaho sideline with their substitution. They call it controlled chaos with their substitution uh, pattern, so to speak. They do push the envelope as to uh, getting people on and off the field. But they, they were very clear as to what they could and couldn't do. And for the most part, as you said, they pushed the envelope, but they do it legally. That time it went over the edge. <laughs> Just a little bit. Third down at 15. Welch in trouble. Nonetheless, escapes across the 25 to about the 28-yard line. He's short of the first down. A gain of about uh, 11 yards. See Dalius Thomas coming off the field right there. Watch him as he's chasing down John Welsh. Welsh steps up. Uh, uh, Thomas just can't get him. And you wonder maybe if he didn't have the, uh, the sore ankle, the sore leg, would he have been able to, to reach out and grab him and bring him down in the backfield? Eddie Shaw back deep to receive this punt from Mike O'Neill. Fair catch signal and makes a tumbling grab just short of the 30-yard line where Southern Miss will put it in play. 13.58 to go in the third. The Vandals on top. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of Bowl Week and the 1998 Humanitarian Bowl is brought to you by Volvo. Volvo reminds you to drive safely. There is snow in the Dar Hills just to the north of us. Jeff Bauer and his Golden Eagles of Southern Miss trail by two touchdowns early going fourth quarter. And Dwayne Woods gets short yardage off the right side of the offensive line. Dwayne Woods with the ball here. 
Jeff Bauer trying to figure out a way to get his receivers to catch the football and then hold on to it after they catch it. They need to be a little more aggressive now. They still can't go completely to the passing game. Last drive, they tried to loosen things up and throw it deep. I think they'll continue to try and mix that in as well. Gideon at the bottom of your screen. Pinkston's at the top. Under immediate pressure, the blitz by Ryan Skinner. And the quarterback, Lee Roberts, goes down near the 25-yard line. It is a loss of seven, third and long coming up. Well, I know done a nice job of disguising where they're all going to come from. But here, you'll see they're back here. The safety's back here. He's not showing it. And then Skinner comes through. There are two black jerseys and only one yellow jersey, gold jersey, to try and pick him up. And he misses it. So now you got two guys come through. And they know Skinner's the guy that creates that. He's their leader on the defense. And when he, when he gets going, look at what their defense has done today. 17 tackles for Skinner today, unofficially. Out of the shotgun on third and long. Third and 15. Roberts. Still looking to make a play. It's a fumble. It's a fumble, and it's covered up back inside the 20-yard line. It'll be seven miss football, fourth and long, coming up. The man who got it back for him was Frank Firestone. Bryson Gardner unabated on the blitz. Boy, nobody, nobody in his face to begin with, but nobody opened downfield, and Gardner comes up from his safety position when he sees Roberts start to run, and then just tomahawks and forces that ball loose, and Southern Miss very fortunate to retain control of it right here and give themselves a chance to punt. Jamie Purser on in punt formation, takes a high snap, gets his kick away. And this one allowed by Vern Bernard to skip across the 50 down at the 41 yard line of thereabouts in Idaho territory. But good field position nonetheless to start a drive. It's been a frustrating afternoon. Fumbles have plagued the Golden Eagles. Lee Roberts here trying to create a play and the safety forces another fumble. It's a Southern showdown as Aaron Brooks and the Cavaliers battle Quincy Carter and the Dogs. The Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, Georgia, Virginia at 5, Thursday on ESPN. The Vandal defense rock solid in this second half, and dare I say they have helped turn the tide in this football game. 35-21, they're spinning a shot out of the second half of Southern Miss. Lee Roberts trying to figure out what he needs to do in this fourth quarter to get his team back in it. Meanwhile, John Welsh has his troops back on the field. And Joel Thomas just starting to crank it up. Lost the football, but he was down by contact. The ball then popped loose, but they are ruling. Or are they? No, they're ruling fumble. John Nix makes the recovery. That ball came loose. I thought the officials at first were motioning down by contact, but that was not the case. Not usually a fumbler, Joel Thomas with his second right there, and Larry Watts recovers it in the secondary, and I agree with you, Wayne. It looked as though he were down, or at least very close. Officials unclear as to what they were gonna call. Ruled it a fumble. Here we'll get a, a good look at it coming right at you. Now you don't know where the ball comes loose, but uh, his knees weren't down. Looks like a good call. Nicks may have been the guy that knocked it loose. It was recovered about five, six yards downfield. Now, an opportunity for the Golden Eagles to get back into this game. From the midfield marker, Roberts finds Pinkston. And Pinkston out of bounds at the 45, gain of about six. Take a look at the uh, storyline. Idaho has capitalized on four Southern Miss fumbles for 21 points. Southern Miss just 56 total yards in the second half. Drop passes and turnovers have hurt them. Welsh for Idaho has been pretty hot to say the least. That 56 yards of total offense for Southern Miss, that when they were hoping they could take over the game had worked out for them. Second and four now at the 44 yard line of Idaho. Still time for Southern Miss to get back into this one. Derek Nix has the first down as he goes down to the 38-yard line. 
Jason can the coverage on the far side. Warm up for the Fiesta Bowl with ESPN Classics Classic Championship Series. It's the best one versus two bowl games of all time. Four fantastic games. The games air on Sunday, January 3rd. And listen to this lineup. 1903 Sugar Bowl. 1993 Sugar Bowl, Alabama, Miami. That's at 6 Eastern. 83 Sugar Bowl, Penn State, Georgia. The 1979 Sugar Bowl, Alabama, Penn State. And then the 75 Rose Bowl, USC and Ohio State. Roberts trying to loft it to Hurd in the pass short of the mark. Not sure if there was some miscommunication as that pass drifted toward the sideline. Kevin Hurd running the post. You get a feeling in, in watching Lee Roberts in the second half that he doesn't have the confidence in his protection that he has had all season. He's only been sacked 14 times, as we said earlier. But four times today. And he's been hit a lot. And as he's dropping back, he's looking to get rid of the ball a little quicker. Doesn't, doesn't quite have that confidence that he needs to have to throw in a rhythm. Just under 11 minutes to go in this game. Southern Miss trailing by 14, facing second and 10. 38-yard line of Idaho. The short drop, Roberts. This is the wide receiver, Gideon, who escapes out of bounds between two defenders at the 30-yard line, and it's a gain of seven yards. I agree with the play calling that we're seeing with Southern Miss right now, mixing in some of the deep passes, but yet getting the ball to Pinkston and getting it to Gideon short, letting them maybe turn it into a big play. Third and three coming up. I don't been very aggressive on third and short in the second half. We'll see if they come after Roberts again. Roberts may be changing the play at the line. Roberts over the top for her diving attempt, and it's just off the mark. Gibbs had the coverage down the sidelines. A big decision here now for Coach Jeff Bauer. And I would think you've got to go for it on fourth and three. I don't think there's any doubt you're in two down territory game situation given the field position. I, I agree. Their field goal kicker, Tim Hardaway, as long as 38. You need the two touchdowns. And you don't want to give Iowa, uh, Idaho's offense a chance to get back on the field. So they need to go through this right here. Maybe vacate the backfield and throw one of those quick hits quick rhythm passes we've seen with success earlier. Only one of three on fourth down conversion. Southern Miss today. Roberts. Got his man for the first down. Todd Pinkston on a gain of about five yards. Just inside the 25-yard line. Well, Lee Roberts is a record-setting quarterback who learned from another record-setting quarterback. Jeff Bauer, in his career, set records at Southern Miss and now is the head coach of these Golden Eagles. And certainly Lee Roberts has benefited from his knowledge and expertise at the quarterback position. First down, football just inside the 25 of Idaho. Southern Miss trailing by two touchdowns. Roberts threads the needle to Hurd. At the 21-yard line, gain of about three. Kevin Hill responded. Coach Bauer on that uh, leader's list for quarterbacks in terms of yardage. Brett Favre over 7,600 yards. Well, you look at Favre and Reggie Collier, that's a pretty good company. Lee Roberts has had a fine career. Roberts trying to lead his team from behind. Under 10 minutes to go in the game. Second down, and it's about six. Derek Nix. First and goal at the eight-yard line. Chased out of bounds by Brad Rice. When you've really seen the patience of a Lee Roberts, he's got a, a lot of experience, two and a half years as a starter, not trying to force something, taking what's there. Still over nine minutes to go, and he's got his offense into a rhythm, doing a nice job of just letting his players make the play. This started on a fumble by Joel Thomas of Idaho, their all-time leading rusher, recovered near the midfield marker by Southern Miss. First and goal to go of the eighth. Randy looks like Roberts has been calling a lot of plays with the line. Roberts under pressure, able to get away. Over the shoulder, catch Gideon for the touchdown. A flag down with 
be for pass interference on Tom Rainer. This touchdown will stand. Great job of Roberts keeping the ball alive. It looked as though he was looking to the left for maybe Todd Pinkston. You see the interference there is going to be declined. But as, as Pinkston was covered and Roberts had the pressure up, does a great job of avoiding the sack, but keeping his eyes looking down the field. See what's going on. Here you see Pinkston out here. He's covered, really nothing there. Now the pressure is getting to Roberts in the backfield, but the key, he's keeping his eyes looking downfield and sees Gideon open up. Officially a seven yard touchdown pass. Tim Hardaway now for the point after. And once again, we've got a seven point ball game. Sherrod Gideon, a seven yard touchdown reception as Lee Roberts was able to stay on his feet long enough to get this one away and bring the Golden Eagles back into the game. Well, you've heard of Moon over Miami. We'll see that at the Orange Bowl later this week. Moon over Boise. And a good ball game brewing in big sky country here as Idaho leads Southern Miss. We're at the second annual Humanitarian Bowl, Bronco Stadium in Boise, Idaho. Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, and Jim Barber. is indeed a ball game. Hannah's kickoff. Good leverage into this kick. Jerome Tice across the 20-yard line. Jim Barber is down on the sidelines, Jim. Wayne with Sherrod Kenny, and he was congratulated by Lee Roberts for the touchdown moments ago. And Lee came over and told him, look, we are going to win this football game. We will find a way to do it. This entire sidelines has come alive for the first time in maybe two and a half quarters. Defensively, Southern Miss is going to try to slap at the football and force a turnover to get in position to tie this football game. And Jim, it was Jake Weimer, not Mao Tosi, who had the quarterback, Lee Roberts, by the ankles. And Roberts was able to escape and get that pass away to Gideon in the end. So, now first down, football to the 23-yard line for Idaho. Welsh. Pass well underthrown as Welsh went down on the play. And that was Adelius Thomas who got to the quarterback. It's been a tough day for Thomas. He was shaken up with a leg injury earlier. You see him limping on the play, but nonetheless hanging in there. Wait, you see Southern Miss this time with five defensive linemen in the game. Idaho had three wideouts, but they're content on trying to force something to happen, either get to Welsh or cause a, a fumble in the running game. Five defensive linemen, unusual at that time. Welsh, a hot and cold passer, three of his last 12 this time. Hands it off to the running back, trying to escape to the right side. Joel Thomas for no yardage or very little. And it'll be a third down coming up. Ty Trahan, the outside linebacker from Poplar, Mississippi, Poplarville, Mississippi, on the stop. What a nice job, too. These linebackers, their job is to make the tackles. The defensive linemen, they're going to cover up the offensive linemen, not let them get to the linebackers. Linebackers have to fly around and make the tackles. Trahan doing a nice job. Idaho leading by seven, facing third and ten. Motion from the tight end. Walsh. And Preston Monaco and overshot him across the 35-yard line. It is fourth down. Southern Miss now feeling the momentum of this ball game. Boy, what a nice play call by Chris Tormey. Ryan Pres Preston Monaco wide open. Welsh has time to throw, just doesn't throw an accurate pass. You just got to hit the open receiver right there. And Welsh just throws the ball a little high. And it's so hard when you have a young team like this Idaho Vandal team to stop the momentum from going against you when bad things start to happen. And after that fumble, things aren't going real well. Cedric Scott coming off the field. A bit shaken up. Well, you know, Welsh, I mentioned, he's, what, uh, three of his last 13 passing. Now punt formation time for the Vandals. Plenty of time left for Southern Miss and Lee Roberts. They don't even have to get out of their game plan. They can stick with what has worked for them. It's been the fumbles, them stopping themselves, that have, have given Idaho such an advantage in, in field position. O'Neill, long count. And he hit a dead shot toward the near side. 
And it sailed out of bounds. They're going to mark it at the 45-yard line of Idaho. Just a 22-yard punt. Bad time for that to happen to O'Neill, Torby, and company. Boy, I tell you, when momentum shifts, and that looks like a dejected offensive uh, trio from Idaho. Welsh, the quarterback in the middle, he has been cold here in this fourth quarter. Meanwhile, starting at the 45 off a shank punt in enemy territory, the Golden Eagles of Southern Miss trying for the equalizing score and maybe the lead. Lee Roberts under pressure from Malto. Tulsi and gets it away and a diving grab is made on the play by they're going to motion it's incomplete two wide receivers will play a prominent role for the Golden Eagles down the stretch here's Jeff Bauer they're talented players they both can run uh, Gideon's got great quickness um, you know I think it's tough to uh, tough to man up on those guys and it's uh, we've got a good situation when you can run the ball um, you know it's 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 tough to spread them out and and, and play pass defense. We're going to hurt you running the football, and uh, you pack them in there to stop the run. You got to single up on those guys. Getting in and Pinkston. There's Pinkston right there. And second down. Way over the top in the pass. Uh, well off the mark. Intended for a well covered uh, Kevin Hurd, and he was well covered on that play by Dennis Gibbs. Gideon and Pinkston, we mentioned their numbers before, but look at what they've done today. See Gideon with 10 receptions, and could have been a couple more if not for a couple of drops, and then the two touchdowns, the big plays. A lot of yards going to those two guys, and they're not done yet. Southern Miss, 5 of 14 on third down, facing third and 10. From the 45 of Idaho. Lee Roberts, little touchback. Gideon goes up high to get it. First down inside the 30 at the 27-yard line. Gain of 18 yards. Boy, what a nice route Gideon runs. He gets away from Chris Snowboinga right at the line of scrimmage, creates a little room, and Roberts throws the perfect pass. And Gideon goes up and gets it right at the highest spot. He doesn't wait for it to come to him. Maybe get it knocked away. Jumps up and catches it at its highest point. Puts it away safely. Roberts over 300 yards passing here this afternoon. Seven point lead for Idaho. Southern miss on the drive. First down to the 27. Franklin in motion. Derek Nix to the 19 yard line. Mal Tosi makes the stop for the Vandals and a gain on the play of eight yards. Nice job by the left side of Southern Miss offensive line with Henry McClendon and Jeff Hopkins. They really open up a nice hole right here. That's where the run's going to be. Take a look at how they move those black jerseys out of there. Give Nix plenty of room. Cut right through there. Look at that hole. You get hit. You hit that with some momentum. You're going to pick up a lot of yards. Second down. A little bit less than three yards to go. A short three. Knicks again. First down yardage. Close to the 15-yard line. Will Beck on the stop for Idaho. Again, Southern Miss likes to run over their left tackle, Henry McClendon. He's doing a nice job of giving Knicks the line of scrimmage. And Knicks a big, strong back, picking up a couple extra yards. As you said, we'll give them the first down here. McClendon, all-conference USA performer, number 72 at left tackle, or should say the quick tackle, and Jeff Hopgood is the quick guard. They flip-flop them. Matter of fact, right now, those two are on the right side of the formation. First down. Knicks. Like the Red Sea for Moses. 15 yards open up the middle. And Knicks takes it in for the score. And Southern misses within a, an extra point of taking the lead. Of tying the game, I should say. A two-point conversion would give them the lead, but at this stage of the game, you take the extra point here. Well, especially with the momentum that your offense has, you don't want to take, do anything to take a step backwards. You're going to get the ball back, tie the game up right here, which we we're seeing they're doing. But what a job by that offensive line to take control on that drive, open up some big holes for Derek Nix. Hard away to tie it. 
And he's got it through the uprights. 6.37 left to go. Knicks with his third touchdown. Watch this hole open up for the true freshman running back. 15-yard gallop into the end zone. And we're back where we began, tied. It's a game of hardball on the hardwood. When inside Bush, Lamont, Barnes, and the Owls square off against Courtney Alexander and the Bulldogs. Temple Fresno State, tomorrow at 10 on ESPN2. Well, things have just started to get interesting here. Southern Miss has rallied from a 14-point second-half deficit to catch the Idaho Vandals with 6.37 left to go in the game. Southern Miss in the gold shirts, black pants, exactly the opposite for Idaho. And don't adjust your television set. That is a blue field. <laughs> Sky above. High kickoff. Jerome Thomas gets a block to the outside to the 31 yard line. Zade Houston, an outside linebacker, made the stop. Jim Barber. Wayne, the injury situation may be starting to get to Southern Miss, although they've come back to tie this game. Scott with a groin problem moments ago, and Thomas with lower back problems and a limp continue to stay out there. And also, Sherrod Gideon has lower back problems, despite the fact he's made some huge catches. We'll see if the injuries make a difference down the stretch. First down from the 32-yard line for the Idaho Vandals, who find themselves deadlocked with Southern Miss. The slant to Townsley, first down yardage to the 45 on a gain of 13 yards. One thing we saw earlier is when John Wells gets into a rhythm, he can become very hot. He spreads the ball out very well. He's been cold in this second half for the most part. If you get him into a rhythm, you let him open some things up, Idaho can move the ball. They also started doing that when they got Joel Thomas involved with a running game. Shotgun formation. On first down, five receivers set. Welsh shows pretty good speed. Tumbles inside the 35, the market of the 34-yard line. 21-yard gain. Well, this gunslinger still has a few bullets left in that barrel. Oh, I think there are, there's a whole other gun that he may wind up pulling out. Nice job of improvising, not forcing something, and then turning it into a real positive play with just his athletic ability. He, he is known more for his ability to throw the ball, great presence to know that it was covered, pull it down, and make something happen with his feet. Does his scrambling remind you maybe of a Jake Plummer type? Uh, close. Yeah. They set up the screen. Lacey has good quickness, but in a lot of traffic there. It's a gain of five yards nonetheless, which serves the purpose down to the 29-yard line. You wonder if you're Chris Tormey, you've got to be thinking about, we want to get this ball in the end zone. We struggle with our special teams in the, in the field goal kicking department, and if he can get this ball in the end zone, he'll feel a whole lot better not having to rely on a field goal. The market is a gain of six, so it's second down and four coming up. Football at the 28-yard line of Southern Miss. Five minutes left to go. Look at the first half to second half numbers. Nonetheless, he is marshalling this drive into enemy territory. On the roll. Welsh lost it to the end zone. Got it! John Welsh to scramble out, especially after the last run where he picked up so many yards, gets your DBs thinking he's going to run. He's scrambling out. He's getting put towards the line of scrimmage. They come up to support the run, and Preston Monaco gets behind them and is open by five or six yards at one point and just barely catches that ball before he takes a couple of hits. i got to tell you, as hot and cold as John Welsh has been here today, that's his fourth touchdown pass. 
Well, he's going to give Chris Tormey a lot of gray hair <laughs> if he continues the ups and downs. Ben Davis to make it a seven-point lead once again. And he does. So this is a, a great sign of a young team to be able to rebound after a 14-point lead disappears. Here you let your, your hot quarterback, who's been cold, turn something into a, a big play. Great catch by Preston Monaco. And meanwhile, Coach Bauer pleading, hey, listen, give us a break out there. <laughs> This has been a roller coaster of a ride for Coach Bauer of Southern Miss and Chris Dormy, the head coach at Idaho. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl coming up on Monday. The national championship game. Number one ranked Tennessee facing number two Florida State. Monday, July 4th, live at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific time on ABC. And don't forget, that's the game that ABC Sports and ESPN.com bring you the first ever enhanced TV during this Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Don't miss it. Log on with your computer. Get updated stats as the game's going on. Check out a, a player profile or two. Maybe call a play or two, for goodness sakes. Well, in this game, we've seen some outstanding offenses. In that game with Florida State, Tennessee, dominated by defense. Maybe the two best in the country. Davis, good depth into this one. And through the end zone. Oh, the swing of momentum back and forth. These are going to be two worn out ball clubs when this one's over. I'm not sure if he was asking for some kind of a, a holding call on the I think he felt that previous play. when Welsh scrambled out, the linemen on the end of the line of scrimmage were holding as they were turning their defenders to the inside. Meanwhile, John Welsh, four TD passes today. Yeah, it's been hot and cold for John, but one thing about John Welsh is whether he's going cold or not, he's going to keep going. He's, he's going to throw the ball. Sometimes good things, sometimes bad things, but they're going to keep throwing it. First down, Southern Miss at the 20. Lee Roberts escapes. One man, but not the other. Mild Tosi initially, and then quick penetration. Ryan Knowles, and then the freshman. Will Beck reining in on him. And this is the trophy, the Humanitarian Bowl trophy, and both of these teams going after it big time. Six sacks now by the Idaho Vandals. A loss of yardage back to the 13-yard line, a loss of seven. And a defense that has been flat for most of this fourth quarter is very fired up right now. Out of the shotgun. We'll make that Eddie Shaw over the middle. And the tackle uh, completed by Rayner. Tom Rayner on the stop. Gain of yardage out to the 23-yard line. Gain of 10. It'll leave third down and passing coming up. Nice tackle by Rayner there, knowing that even though he's going to give up the completion, they had a lot to get the first down. It's still going to be third and long now. When you rush five, as Idaho did, you just don't want to give up the big play if the sack doesn't get there. Third and about eight. Nix has running room and barrels his way over Rayner to the first down of the 31-yard line. So Southern Miss continues this drive. We're just over three minutes left to go in the game. Southern Miss has moved the football here today, no question, but four lost fumbles have really hurt the cause. And Idaho has taken advantage of some special teams plays, most notably the long kickoff return for the touchdown. 98-yard return of the first quarter by Jerome Thomas. First and 10, under three minutes to go in the game now for Southern Miss. At the Golden Eagle, 31. Roberts to Gideon, made a couple of head fakes, and escapes out of bounds. My goodness, he froze the defender. He could freeze vodka with that kind of move, and almost picked up the first down, gain of nine out of bounds of the 40. Nice job of Roberts to see the blitz coming, get the ball to Gideon quickly. This is the kind of matchup that Southern Miss wants. One-on-one, -on -one, you've got a very skilled player. You see... You see Raymer over there slipping like crazy on that turf, and, and I, I question as the temperature has gotten colder, has some of that started to even freeze, and it has become very slippery. I know I've got to get my ankles taped just watching that play. 
second down and short. at the end of the play, there's a huge hole for Knicks to run through, but at the end of the play, you'll see the ball come stripped right there by Kevin Hill, number 42, one of the few fumbles that has really been forced by Idaho. Boy, you're exactly right. Hill forced it loose, but it was Ryan Skinner, the man who stopped that play on the tackle, held the running back up for Hill to come in and make the fumble force. Now John Walsh takes it himself. Maybe a busted play, but it gets about four nonetheless. Take a look at this Idaho defense. Six tackles behind the line. Six forced fumbles. They've recovered five and five sacks in this game. They had a big question mark coming into this game, how they would play, how they'd be able to stand up against this stronger Southern Miss team, and they have played very, very well uh, on emotions, up and down. They have taken some time off, but have played great overall. Well, I'll tell you what, you've got Arizona coming up tonight against Nebraska on ESPN tomorrow. A New Year's Eve triple header. The AXA Equitable Liberty Bowl. BYU against undefeated 10th ranked right Tulane at 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 Pacific. The Chickaville Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, 19th ranked Georgia against Virginia, and that to be followed by the Sanford Independence Bowl, Mississippi against Texas Tech at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 5.30 Pacific Time, all coming up on ESPN tomorrow, New Year's Eve. How about Texas Tech? They've got their own Ricky R Williams as a running back that's pretty good in his own right. They certainly do. No doubt there's some great runners out there. We're seeing a couple of them here in this game, but the sledding has not been so smooth for the two runners here. Joel Thomas, yards have been hard to come by, and fumbles by uh, Derek Nix have hurt the cause for Southern Miss. Idaho leading by seven. 2.21 left to go in this game. Southern Miss was a heavy favorite in this contest. the stop 11 yards downfield first down to the 31 take a look at this Wayne at the end if, if he cuts to the inside right there it looks like he's got plenty of room cuts to the outside you, got, you don't know what a running back sees and he's got a lot more experience running it than I do but it looked as though inside huge hole 79 yards, 19 carries for Joel Thomas in his final game at Idaho. First down from the 31. Motion from the tight end. Thomas up the middle, picking his way. And it's obvious that what Idaho wants to do here, Randy Wright, is just run some clock. We're under two minutes to go in the game. Run some clock, hold on to that ball with two hands, and even if you don't get the first down, you're forcing Southern Miss to use their timeouts. Timeout taken by Southern Miss. Dalius Thomas has played with a leg injury here today. He's played courageously. Coming up tonight on ESPN2, National Hockey Night. 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 Central. The troubled New York Rangers are the big names. Gretzky, Leach, and Richter against the Phoenix Coyotes. Phoenix second to in the uh, Pacific Division. But the Coyotes without Keith Kachuk and Jeremy Roenick due to injuries. All coming up tonight from America West Arena in Phoenix, Arizona. 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific Time. National Hockey Night on ESPN2. Minute 39 left to go. Boy, and the looks on the faces of the Golden Eagles say it all. Meanwhile, 
anxiously anticipating a potential victory. The Idaho Vandals sit by quietly. It wasn't long ago that those emotions were reversed as we saw a dejected John Welsh and Idaho offense feeling down. Football is at the 27-yard line of Southern Miss. The Idaho Vandals facing a second down at about six. Double tight ends in the game for the Vandals. Welsh taking as much time as he can. Joel Thomas to the outside cannot escape Cedric Scott. Scott makes the tackle, loss of a yard or two. Meantime, the clock at 1.32. They got a face mask penalty. There's a flag thrown late on that play. And it's going to be on Scott, I believe. I think Thomas was slowing down, not wanting to go out of bounds, and I think you're right. I think the face mask was grabbed, and we're going to have a penalty here against Southern Miss for that. I was wondering why that clock was stopped. Yeah, that's what Coach Bauer was motioning with the five, holding his hand up five, five-yard penalty. And that's what they call five-yard penalty on that face pass. Still second down, but second down at about two. Instead of third, what would have been eight or nine, and now it's second and two. They pick up this first down. Southern Miss only has one timeout left. This could be the game, and they should have two downs to do it, being only second right now. Southern Miss takes a timeout, and according to the scoreboard, they are out of timeouts. We are at Boise, Idaho, state capital, the state of Idaho, Bronco Stadium, at the foothills of the Rockies for the second annual Humanitarian Bowl, and what an entertaining game this has been. Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, Jim Barber. A minute 32 left to go in this one. Idaho leading 42-35 over heavily favored USM, the University of Southern Mississippi. Stay tuned for Street Rider. Coming up next, a classic look at cars from Newport, Rhode Island. That's coming up next year on ESPN2. Idaho in what is generally unfriendly territory. They're at the home of their arch rivals, the Boise State Broncos. But they have made themselves at home here, and that man has been a disappointing roller coaster for him. Jeff Bauer looking on from the sidelines of Southern Miss, trying to get a stop here. One final stop of Idaho. Jordan Thomas gets the call. Good second effort, gets the first down. Southern Miss is out of timeouts, a minute 28 remaining in the game. And Idaho picks up a big first down. You can see Jeff Bauer's reaction, and that's going to be the game right now. But Southern Miss cannot stop the clock anymore. It'll start as soon as they get the ball set here after the first down. And Idaho just needs to kneel down on it a couple of times and let the clock continue to run. What an entertaining football game this has been. They will just down it here a couple of times, perhaps. Final seconds ticking away. John Welsh, the swashbuckling redshirt freshman quarterback from Oak Forest, Illinois. Mount Carmel High School. Penalty marker thrown, and that will stop the clock. What do we have here? snap on the offense at the five-yard penalty still first down I'm not sure what Chris Tormey isn't too unhappy with that they've got it down to 61 seconds Alexicos Nick Alexicos that the defense for Idaho very aggressive here today Randy forced some turnovers forced a lot of turnovers five fumbles they forced six fumbles they recovered five of them and as you said, when they have created those, they have forced those fumbles. Some of them, lack of concentration on Southern Miss's part, just dropping the ball. The other ones, four. Welsh drops back. Final 30 seconds ticking off the clock. And this should do it. Celebration for Chris Tormey in his fourth season of the Vandal program. 
Only their third year in Division 1A football. Idaho wins a bowl game. Upsetting heavily favorite Southern Mississippi 42 to 35. Let the celebration begin for the Vandals in Boise. Meanwhile, the Golden Eagles, the looks on the faces of those players tells it all. Final score, the Idaho Vandals over the Southern Mississippi Golden Eagles, 42-35. Coming up next, Street Rider, a look at classic cars from Newport, Rhode Island on ESPN2. For Randy Wright and Jim Barber, this is Wayne Larrabee on behalf of our entire ESPN2 group. So long from Boise, Idaho, and the Humanitarian Bowl. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.